Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zeddy here and I am here to finally, after days of working on the 20k special, finally drop to you all this lovely, lovely story of what if Zether was in Naruto. Now I know I did what if Zether was in Boku no Hero Academia, however this one is the best story that I've done thus far. The story is amazing and I feel like I owed it to you guys. So I mainly scripted a lot of this and I thought about this for weeks on end. So I know you guys are about to love what you guys are about to hear. However, before I continue on with the intro and with what I gotta say to you guys for getting me to 20k, I have to say one quick thing. This video is sponsored! Yes, boys, I got my first sponsorship of the channel. Real one, not somebody commissioned, not none of that stuff. This is a real sponsor. However, more on that will be towards the beginning of the video, and I'm going to be explaining a little bit on that stuff. That being said, though, guys, um... Now, I'm finally going to get onto the details of the video and stuff like that. Boys, I just have to say, thank you guys so much. Like, really, truly, thank you guys so much for getting me to this milestone that is 20k. See, back when I first started making what ifs, I never, never, ever, 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 ever in my wildest dreams could have thought that my job full time, I'm not working no little part time no more, full time job was going to be YouTube. This is insane. It is surreal. You guys don't understand what it feels like to wake up every day and see comments that motivate you saying, bro, Zether, I love the vids. Bro, when's the next video dropping? He, or people telling me that I'm, I'm a legend for making these stories, dude. It feels so amazing. You guys make my day. Shout out to everybody who helped me get to where I am today. All the people who taught me where I was and wasn't going wrong. All the people who held my hand along the ride. And for those of you who's been supporting me ever since day one, since my first ever what if Deku had Godspeed. Even to those of you who were here even before that, when I dropped my first first ever what if that did pretty horribly, in case any of you guys are still there from here from there, then thank you guys so much. But honestly, the biggest thank you of all definitely has to go to my girlfriend. Now, she is literally the only reason that you guys are watching me because if it wasn't for the fact that I have a good mic or at least a decent one, I wouldn't say mine is like, it was, it's not like professional quality, but it's very, very, it's a very good mic for the channel size that I have. I am maybe thinking of getting a better mic later on, but you know, in due time, everything in due time, right? But if it wasn't for her guys, my channel would not be anywhere near where it is because she was truly the first fan. I mean, she was the one who quite literally doesn't even really watch anime like that, but would hear me tell what ifs to her. And she pretty much was just like, yeah, bro, do YouTube. So boys, she's really the only reason why I'm here. But you guys have been like literally there watching every single one of my videos, liking my videos, commenting, and I cannot thank you guys enough. That is why this video is going to be insanely long, and I hope you guys go on to enjoy the video. With that being said, make sure you guys please, please, please check out the links in the description, seeing as I'm going to be having sponsorship key details in there, and more on that stuff later on. But with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so this is probably the part where you guys are now like, all right, Zither, how are you going to do this? How are you going to implement yourself into the story of Naruto? Is, 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 is your character going to be OP with the KK Genkai? Is your character going to have some sort of weird dojutsu? Are you going to have luck? Well, the, the answer to that is basically I'm going to be having one of the three things. And I'm going to be getting into that now. Okay. So, the story of what if Zether was in Naruto is going to be starting off like this. Of course, the attack of Konoha would still happen, however, one little change that is going to be changing the entirety of this entire story is going to be that essentially, in this version of events, Zether is going to be born about two weeks before Naruto. And of course, his name is going to be Zether. That being said, he basically is going to be having his parents stripped away from him on the day of the Nine Tails attack. 
Now, Zether, as I was saying, would basically be about two years old on the day of the Konoha attack, which basically is the Obito and the Ninetale stuff. In this version of events, De uh, I almost said Deku, but no, Zether's parents would be taken away from him on that very night. That being said, since Zether wasn't exactly somebody who was well known his parents were honestly some nobody shinobis they were part of some very unknown clans and they were basically they had pretty decent amount of chakra within them the father had more than the mother and they were both pretty decent ninjas they were both jonins the mother was a jonin who ended up retiring to become let's say let's see a florist she was a florist and she worked at eno's mother's little flower shop that being said deku would end up having to go into an orphanage in the village i, I said deku oh wow i know many of you guys are probably like what's going on zither don't tell me that you're messing up your own story it's weird because i never use the name zether so you know cut me some slack anyways that being said zether would grow up in an orphanage where kids would honestly just pick on him for being well the weakest in the group see zether would grow for the first four years being pretty scrawny and weak zether was pretty skinny and off rip he actually he actually had some some weird problems with him. It seemed as if he could never calm down. He was pretty hyperactive and he always wanted to move around, jump. And when it came to ninja studies, it seemed as if he was the dumbest one around. For some reason, Zether just didn't understand by the traditional methods. And whenever basically they would try to teach him reading or writing, he would always have a hard time with, you know, um, well, speaking the language and stuff. Zether just honestly was pretty challenged when it start when he started. That being said, everything would basically begin to change at around the age of four years old, because this is when Zether would be the first human in the entire Naruto verse to unlock a quirk. This quirk would be luck probability manipulation or just plain old luck literally the quirk is what it sounds like it literally just makes me lucky and um it's pretty op when you think about it like imagine uh madara shoots a laser beam at me like that little light fang he would miss because of my luck so it's pretty broken ability and i'm going to be trying to basically downgrade it just a little bit so i don't solo the entire verse with my luck but that being said, he would of course unlock his luck quirk. And this is when things would finally start turning around for Zether. Zether would basically finally start making a couple of friends. Whenever it came to playing sports, he always seemed to be the first one picked. He would start hitting all of his shots when it comes to shuriken jutsu. And when it comes to taijutsu, he all of a sudden became very skilled. For some reason, he just seemed extremely lucky. Things would go like this for about, let's say, 3-4 months until eventually somebody would finally adopt Zether, this being a, um, a middle class Hyuga member. This Hyuga member would actually be incapable of having kids and well, you know, he saw Zether doing a little bit of taijutsu and well, you know, um, throwing some shurikens and he was pretty amazed by his talent. He also saw that Zether seemed a little different from the other kids. So when it came down to picking who he wanted to take home, he ended up picking Zether. Now, Zether ended up going into the man's life and this uh, Hyuga member was actually extremely kind. And Zether would end up growing wearing a bunch of little just normal casual shirts and just the little normal shinobi pants. He would even wear the little uh, the little Jesus fours because that's basically what the shinobis wear. And well, that's pretty much what Zether would be rocking. You know, he'd be wearing that with a little Huga crest on his shirts. Now. When Zether went into the Hyuga compound, a lot of them were actually very skeptical. Why would a Hyuga, you know, have to go this far? It'd be better to just not have a son at all. Like, what if he was to try to teach him the Hyuga fighting style or something like that? It could be a threat to their clan. But Hisashi would ultimately throw that to the side and just be like, nah, bro, it's not even that big of a deal. That being said, Zether would end up growing with a pretty loving, uh, um foster father who would pretty much end up well you know hooking the man's other up you know he would get him in some better drip he would teach zether a little bit better taijutsu skills and he would actually end up trying to teach zether the hyuga fighting style that being the gentle fist now, Zether would actually start off and immediately be pretty talented at it he'd be pretty lucky so 
most of the time when he would throw a palm strike, he would actually land on chakra points in and of itself, and he would end up training on the Hyuga fighting style for about 8 months before he was found out. See, the reason that he was found out was because one day, Zether actually ended up, um, accidentally showing off one of his moves when a kid picked on when a kid tried to pick on him zether got pretty angry and he ended up using the fighting style on him the kid immediately ran to his parents and he ended up telling him that some outsider was using the gentle fist that being said it was reported to Hisashi, and this is when essentially Hisashi would catch wind and basically tell zether's father that if he doesn't stop it he and his son is going to be executed for trying to uh, share around the secrets of the hyuga clan it is only meant to be passed down to people from the bloodline and since Zether wasn't part of that bloodline, he, well, didn't have access to any of that stuff. That being said, this is when Zether would basically start to create his own fighting style, inspired by the Hyuga, by the Hyuga style of combat. Zether would create his very own Kenjutsu style, and in case you don't know what that is, it's basically where you use a sword. Now, Zether would be very talented in, katana fi in a Katana fighting style that basically relies on the basics of the Hyuga fighting style style and he would even combine it with his pure luck so essentially it's pretty much concentrated strikes of the body that focus on tendons as well as very weak chakra points which end up essentially weakening the target and it's even better than the gentle fist because of the fact that with the sword he has a longer range and reach when it comes to fighting an opponent so if he was to fight against somebody with the gentle fist it would be very very bad for them he would end up working on this for the next three years and he would spend a solid three years just practicing and practicing and practicing getting his strength up working on a little bit of uh taijutsu hand-to-hand -hand combat shuriken throwing he would work on hugo a fighting style every every once in a while in secret even after being told he wasn't allowed to and well that's basically how zether kind of just lives out his life that being said this is when zether would basically be let's say he was four years old it was about a year uh let's see uh, let's have a three-year time skip he's now seven years old and at this point he's actually gotten quite good at this style so he would end up uh you know training even harder and we're gonna have another two-year time skip where during that time he would end up developing his very own strange style of this of sword it would be a sort of drunken style more specifically a random strike style where Zether essentially closes his eyes and just starts wailing in random directions, just jumping around and hitting as if he was some sort of ma maniac with black Air Force energy who's just going insane. Like, whenever he sees anybody it's on site that's basically what the fighting style is and because he has such weird luck the weird moves and slashes would always connect because of his speed and luck and it would take him a bunch of years to finally develop it would basically take him until he is nine years old because you know seven plus two you know it's nine years old you know it makes sense anyways that being said zether's work with his father would start paying off and not only because zether was getting stronger his father was actually so impressed with zether his skills would actually lead him so high to the point where he would regularly participate in strange events on the streets where you know if you got if you guessed the cup that a ball is in you would win a bunch of yen and stuff like that zether would often participate in those events and he would always win he would just be lucky he'd be a different breed a lot of the hyuga kids would actually love hanging out with zether and he would grow up having a lot of friends so his social life was pretty good zether would grow up being a little bit of an extroverted person and he just honestly likes talking to people he's not really shy of anything and he loves a good challenge that being said this is when he would finally enter the academy at nine years old he would be about nine and a half now, this is when I'm now going to be covering the first day. Now, Zether would arrive into class with everybody as he's of course allowed into the academy after passing a little exam, which basically tests if they're ready. Zether would pass it with flying marks, and as soon as he passes, it would actually be pretty crazy. Those teachers would actually ask Zether if he wants to basically move up a grade, but he would kind of decline it, saying that why would he move faster if he could stay here and just be ahead of everybody? It would just be fun. Plus, hanging out with older kids just doesn't really sound like his thing. So he would stay in the normal academy and he would actually start excelling more and more. 
Zether would of course arrive and you know on their first day of school he would see a boy sitting on a swing all by himself. Zether would notice him and see the blue eyes and whiskers and just stay away. This would basically go on for the next couple of two weeks and Zether would see the way that all the other kids treat Naruto. He would simply stay away from him never defending or saying anything. He was kind of indifferent towards him. And while everybody else knew the secret of the Nine Tails, Zether was never really told about this stuff. He doesn't know what happened to his parents. All he knows is that they're in an orphanage. That he grew up in an orphanage and maybe, you know, maybe something happened along the lines. Maybe they they passed out, they passed away while doing some ninja work. That being said, Zether was pretty much indifferent. And Naruto all his life basically remained the same. Zether being in the story doesn't really affect anything until later on. That being said, Zether would basically go on with the years of the academy as he would essentially start to learn some more ninjutsu skills and he would start controlling his chakra. By the time that there, like about one, two months would go into the academy, Zether would have a pretty strong control for his, um, chakra he's just lucky for some reason or another he always manages to concentrate the perfect amount of chakra into all of his jutsu and during the time that he was in the academy he would even take note of another kid who seems to be a prodigy similar to him sasuke uchiha zether and naruto would immediately kick it off right off the bat because at this point sasuke's clan still hasn't gone through their little um what would I call this? Their little, um, uh, you know, GTA moment, I guess you could say, where, you know, someone pulls up and, you know, they went back to school shopping at, you know, a little store and they went into the cafeteria. That's yeah, basically, that, happens, that hasn't happened yet. That being said, Zether and Sasuke would actually end up being the ones to grow up as little Mr. Populars because of the fact that Zether had such high marks. Sasuke always seemed to come second to Zether, and at one point when Naruto and Sasuke fought, Zether actually was kind of hoping that the other blonde boy would win because maybe that way, uh, you know, Naruto could get a little bit of extra friends however as soon as the battle started he noticed how people in his class were and how everybody always just like just sucked off this man sasuke for no reason like yeah they're strong you know they have pretty cool talking to people skills but that doesn't mean that they should be glorified zether would kind of see this a little weird and he would kind of just talk to sasuke about it and ask him how he feels sasuke would tell him that he finds it a little strange but it's better than being an outcast he guesses as zether would listen to that he would just be like yeah i guess and well zether would basically just continue going to the academy being pretty goofy and just being extroverted sasuke would sometimes find zether pretty annoying but you know zether would kind of be like a little bit of a leech that just does not leave the man alone so they would end up becoming pretty good friends by the end of it and zether and sasuke would end up actually training so sasuke would get a pretty big amp from this time he would have a pretty great chakra control skills and he would even be a lot better at taijutsu as well as performing the fireball jutsu and stuff like that like basically the jutsus that he has in canon they're just going to be stronger and he would be borderline ready to activate the sharingan yeah, 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 borderline ready. Since he hasn't had any near-death experiences or anything that would trigger the Sharingan yet, I'm just going to say that he he's very close to reaching the Sharingan. That being said, this is when the thing with Itachi would happen, and he would, of course, get the Sharingan. And because he has the extra training, his body is actually able to use it off-rip. So, that being said, Sasuke would be a lot stronger. And in this version, Naruto seeing that those two kids are so far ahead of him would train himself even further, actually getting a decent handle on chakra control way earlier than in canon, as well as finding out that he has a wind chakra nature way earlier than he does in canon because he ends up asking Iruka sensei and you know Naruto ends up doing a little bit of training by himself stealing some scrolls yada 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 you get the point that being said Zether would of course continue being friends with Sasuke even after the Uchiha massacre and if anything Zether is honestly one of the reasons why Sasuke is not feeling that low because after that happened Zether actually uh Sasuke actually ended up moving with uh moving in with Nar uh, no sorry not Naruto but Zether and that actually led to a huge riot within the Hyuga compound which one day when Zether arrived home and he basically you know he came in with Sasuke as they were both unpacking they would walk inside of the door and as soon as they walked in they would see Zether's father lying on the ground about to die Zether would immediately run over to him and tell him you're gonna make it trust me 
Trust me, you're gonna make it. There's no way you're gonna pass away, not with my luck. As he would pick up his father and begin to basically haul ass to the to the nearest, you know, hospital. This is when a bunch of Hugo would be standing in front of him, a bunch of the random ones, and they would basically just tell him that nah, that man not only took in an orphan and taught him the Hugo fighting style, but now Uchiha's are coming in? That's a disgrace to their people. That man deserves to die. Zether would immediately get enraged as he would whip out his katana and say, Say that again and I'll decapitate you. As the man would say, I'd like to see you try. Many of them would get into their stance and Zether and Sasuke would get into it as well. They would begin to rush and as time would go on, they would see that they're just not progressing. More and more Hugas would arrive and they would basically proceed to tell Zether that, you know, that he's not worth it. That being said... Zether would basically just grab his father and take him somewhere where he could spend his final moments with him because he may be lucky, but not that lucky. He would end up telling his father that he's going to make it if he'll treat him if he has to. As his father would just look up at Zether and smile saying that ever since he adopted him and he came into his life, it's been so amazing. He would even look at Sasuke as he would hold his hand and say, <coughs> Sasuke, he would look at him and say, you... You changed my boy's life. Thank you. Watch out for him. As this is when Zether would say, no, don't talk like that. You're, you're going to make it. He would proceed to basically hold Zether by the face as he would then tell him, you see my left eye? As Zether would look at him and say, no, 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 no. He would then tell Zether to pretty much take it. As Zether would say, you can't be serious. Zether would look at his father as he would literally take his own eye out and give it to Zether. Zether would hold it within his hands as he would say, You're serious? And his father would pass away. This is when Zether would scream to the heavens as he would say, No! And immediately he would just begin to cry as Sasuke would tell him that he knows how he feels. Sasuke and Zether would sit there for hours and Zether would put the eye away as he just wouldn't know what to do. He doesn't feel as if he's worthy of the Hyuga's eye. If he were to put it in, they would probably go after him. So Zether would just keep it contained in a secret location as they would then proceed to go move into uh, Sasuke's old Uchiha house. This would bring back a lot of suppressed memories from Sasuke and they would both start getting on a little bit of emo stuff. But after a couple of months would pass, they would both slowly start going back to the people they were this being said zether would get a little bit of a dark side after this happens and he would develop a small hatred towards the Hugo clan mainly the middle branch which basically consists of all the people who robbed him from his father this would lead to zether pretty much abandoning the uchi uh the Hugo crest and just completely thinking that it, it that's the that's the fault for you know zether's you know thing that happened to him however after basically thinking about things and thinking about his father, Zether would put on a jacket that his father actually ended up making for him. It was a custom black hoodie which had the Hyuga crest on it on its right shoulder. It's just a plain black hoodie and he basically ended up gifting Zether a katana about one week before he passed. This being said, Zether would always wear this same hoodie every day and it would actually fit him pretty big seeing as it was actually his father's. Zether would always cherish this hoodie and never let it get dirty. He would always keep it in pristine condition, making sure to hand wash it, hand dry it, and all that stuff. And well, this is when time would eventually go on, as they would eventually make it to graduation day. This being said, this is when the Naruto stuff happens with Iruka. They basically get assigned to their teams, and seeing as all this stuff kind of goes similar to canon, I'm not really going to be covering the really canon material, seeing as we all know the story of Naruto. Since Naruto's story doesn't change, we're not really going to be covering too much. Obviously, Zether's training with Sasuke and all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. You guys get the point. Naruto would, of course, still be annoying, and when it comes to the team assigned, it would be as follows. Sasuke. Naruto and Zether. This is when the greatest team would basically be formed on Team 7. They would proceed away for Kakashi, and of course he would be late, as he would tell them all to go on the roof. Zether would be pretty annoyed at the fact that Kakashi was late. Naruto would also be making some pretty bold statements and kind of getting on Sasuke's nerves, as Naruto would take a little bit of offense to that, and, you know, uh, no, Zether would take a little bit of like offense to that and be like, yo, back up, bro, like, you're not about to, not about to be on my bro like this. And Naruto would just back up as he has both 
of the big dogs just in classes. He would say, you two better stop underestimating me. Um, I'm going to be the greatest ninja. Believe it. As Zether would just be standing there, as he would chuckle and say, <laughs> looks like you're even goofier than me. As he would proceed to basically go with, uh, you know, Sasuke, they would go on top of the roof, and this is when they would all be told about everything. After that, Sasuke and Zether would go home after telling their goals. Zether would say that he just wants to be a ninja that can make his father proud. As Kakashi would understand that, and after hearing those sentiments, he would think back to his father, Sakumo Hatake. And this is when he would basically spend the very next day just kind of thinking about this as they would of course meet the very next day. And this is when they would proceed to pretty much just chill. This would lead to Zether running a little bit late because he's going to be oversleeping like a G. And not only that, the man's also going to be eating breakfast because he completely just forgot about the fact that they weren't supposed to eat. Meaning um, he got kind of lucky. And he would basically arrive to the camp one minute before Kakashi does. This would cause Sasuke to be like, dude, you need to stop getting so lucky. As Zether would just arrive there and start chuckling, Naruto would say that this guy's taking forever. And this is when Sasuke and Zether would look at him as they would be like, bro, come on now, you can wait. Kakashi would then arrive and this is when they would pretty much be told about the bell test. As soon as it starts, Zether and Sasuke would both jump into the trees as Naruto would basically do the thing that he does in canon. And after watching that, Zether would just look at Naruto as he just says, is this guy dumb? We've never fought against him. We don't know his moves, what his what his you know specialties are. We need to watch out for that stuff. He would immediately create a clone as his clone would rush in at Kakashi. Sasuke seeing that would rush in there with his clone as Sasuke would shoot a fireball jutsu. Zether would create a wind bullet which would propel it even more bigger as it would be about the size of Kid Madara's uh, fireball. And this would lead to, uh, well, Kakashi having a substitute out of the way. After that, Naruto would finally get untied and he would proceed to rush in there as he would proceed to basically ruin the entire operation. Sasuke would almost get caught off guard by Kakashi when Naruto comes in and he actually ends up almost literally dying because he jumps into the attack. Zether would have to would be forced to jump out of his hiding spot and basically barely be able to save him as he would hold his katana in front of Kakashi's blade. He would then push him back as immediately uh, Zether would close his eyes and he would proceed to pretty much hold the katana in a similar fashion to the Hyuga combat style. He would then begin to rush at him as he would start swinging his katana around randomly. Kakashi would immediately be amazed at Zether's strength and Zether would glare at Naruto as he would say if it wasn't for me you would have died he would then say Sasuke now as he would put like his with his left hand he would basically throw Sasuke straight at um Kakashi as Sasuke would use his hand to propel off of it Kakashi would then get jumped by Sasuke and Zether and this is when he would then say these two are amazing he would immediately activate his three to Mo Sharingan as it's at this point that Kaka uh, no, Sasuke would start losing his cool and he would basically start making some very out there choices. Sasuke would start to lose his cool and obviously get caught off guard, which would lead to Naruto being like, Sasuke, how could you be so careless? He would rush in there and Kakashi would knock Naruto out. As it's at this point that Zether is just like, nah, I'm done. He would basically proceed to like slap, uh, he would basically proceed to create a clone, which would wake Naruto up. And he would say, you gotta get out of the way. He would throw Naruto's body away as Naruto barely wakes up. And Zether would essentially proceed to get into his normal refined combat style. He would then rush at Kakashi as with his other hand, he would basically be forming one-handed hand signs. As he would shoot fireballs and wind bullets at Kakashi. Those are his only uh, chakra natures at the moment. Zether would scream at the top of his lungs and rush at Kakashi as Kakashi is whooping this man, Zether. See, obviously Zether has luck on his side but i mean kakashi is pretty op plus he has a sharing god so he can he can dodge most of zether's moves however zether does nick kakashi a lot of times when when it came down to his more specialized and refined fighting style However, he did end up basically slowly wearing Kakashi down. This would this would lead to Sasuke basically waking up and rushing in there as Naruto would basically say, I'm going to help. Believe it. He would create a bunch of shadow clones, which would all get GG'd by Kakashi. And it's at this point that Zether would look at Naruto as he would say, all right, Naruto, here's the plan. Naruto would say, I don't need one. And he would rush in there as Zether would be like, bro, 
Stop! This is when Naruto would turn back and Kakashi would immediately look at Zether. As Zether literally pulls up behind Naruto with his blade on his neck and says, If you get in my way again, I won't hesitate to decapitate you. His darker side would start coming in and Naruto would just be like, <sighs> as it's at this point that he would basically yell at Naruto to get out of the way that they almost had him if it wasn't for him interrupting earlier but you had to butt in Naruto stay out you're far too weak you can play a support role with your shadow clones later on but now this is me and Sasuke as they would rush over there Kakashi after hearing that would pretty much use the headhunter jutsu on Zether but he would dodge but in the dodge he would proceed to basically fall but right as he does that um basically kakashi would try to catch him again however sasuke would save him and it would just lead to a cycle of kakashi trying to catch zether off guard but not being able to whatsoever and then saying stop as immediately he would begin to pretty much tell them that they failed this is when zether would say <laughs> There's no way I failed. As he would just have a little slug, a smug look on his face. Kakashi would then tell him that the point of this exam was as he would then stay silent and say, you know what? You guys are going to get one more chance because you two are extremely talented. But you, as he would point his, his uh, kunai at Zether, he would say, you need to start thinking about the team other than just yourself. Zether, after hearing that, would kind of just go silent, and Naruto would just be like, huh, as it's at this point that he would get tied up, and it's at this point that Zether and Sasuke would proceed to eat. Zether would say that he's good, as he would basically look at Naruto and just say, hey, I was being pretty stupid back there. Um, I'm sorry. Naruto would hear this and say, you better be sorry. This is when Sasuke would hold Naruto by the shoulder and say, you better better consider yourself lucky. He hates saying sorry. Naruto would just stay quiet and then say, Well, I guess I'm sorry too. As it's at this point that Zether would look at Naruto and just say, Well, look, if we make another plan, do you think you can help us out actually this time? Naruto would say, Believe it! As his stomach would growl and Zether would give him some food. This would lead to Kakashi pulling up and being like, You! You pass! This is when Zether would just kind of smirk and be like, Yeah. I knew it was going to pass. There's no way with my luck that we were going to fail. As this is when they would basically just pretty much proceed to pass and be told that, yeah, you know, if you if you don't go by the rules, you're scum. But if you don't take care of your teammates, you're worse than scum or whatever. I, I honestly forgot the line. But that being said, this is when Zether would look at Naruto and say that, Maybe this will work out someday. As Naruto would say, believe it! And this is when they would all basically go away. This would lead to Zether and Sasuke going home. And this would lead to about three weeks of missions. Which they will be completing with no issue. That being said, the next recording, which will probably be like another 30 minutes, will be coming in pretty shortly. That being said, I'm kind of tired since it's like night time. But I'm going to be picking off the story in a little bit. Since it's in your guys' perspective, it's not even going to feel like it was that long. It's just going to be like 10 seconds since I was talking. But yeah, future Zether, take it away. Okay, past me. Thank you for passing over the mic so graciously. <laughs> no, but seriously, boys. Um, we're now going to be picking off where my past self left off. This is probably going to be split into four different recordings. Seeing as the video is most likely going to be about two hours long, or at least I hope it's going to be two hours long. But yeah, you guys, in your perspective, I probably wasted like a whole 30 minutes of your, I mean, a whole 30 seconds of your time with just transitioning into the next part. For the next little transition, I'm going to try not to do that and just like say a word and then keep going with the sentence on another part. But yeah. That being said, obviously the three weeks would of course go by and Zether and Sasuke would basically proceed to get to know Naruto a little bit more. The interactions between Sasuke and Naruto that happened in canon are actually going to go a lot different due to the fact that Zether has always been there by Sasuke's side. So Sasuke's interactions with Naruto have always changed. They've always been a lot shorter and Sasuke and Naruto never had a little bit of a rivalry where Naruto looked at Sasuke as like the best and he wanted to surpass him. No, instead he saw both of them in that way and so he always try to go up to Zether and Sasuke but now that they're all on the same team they kind of are starting to slowly get to know each other a little bit right this being said obviously the three weeks would pass as I said like a million times already and during this time Zether and Sasuke would honestly start getting to think that Naruto's pretty annoying See, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Even though Naruto's a, a real one, you know, my boy Naruto, I love him, but believe it. 
I'm going to be the greatest Hokage ever. It's pretty annoying, man. Like, it's pretty annoying. So, yeah, Zether and Sasuke, they think he's a little too annoying so far. But, you know, it's mostly because of Naruto always complaining on the missions, the little D-rank missions that they get. Talking about some, oh, why am I rescuing a cat? I should be putting my, my skills to the test with Sasuke and Zether just being like, bro, what skills? You don't even know how to walk on water yet. Come on now, don't play with me. And Naruto would just be sitting there like, eh, you know, like all whining and stuff right that being said they would of course go on those d-rig missions and this is when sasuke and zether would basically always have good luck with catching the cats and all that stuff and bringing ladies across the street and all that stuff right they both just seem like exceptional shinobi so far and kakashi even knows that these missions are far too easy for them however the reason that they're not going to jump into extra missions already is because Naruto is way far behind these two and he needs to get experience for himself on how to carry mission and you know basically act around people who are paying him to do this stuff. That being said, Naruto one day after seeing Kakashi and Sether and Sasuke just all kind of vibing and like having a cool time, while Naruto kind of just felt like a little bit of an outcast, he decided that after that time he would go up to Kakashi and ask him a question. Kakashi would stop right before he was gonna body flicker and he would say what is it naruto as naruto would walk over to him he would say kakashi sensei can i get some extra training as kakashi would look at him and say that's an interesting prospect naruto well i i guess you were a little far behind these other two right well we might as well for the next two weeks i'm going to be training you in the basics and the fundamentals of being a shinobi such as tree walking water walking making clones basically the fundamentals essentially is all that uh kakashi is pretty much going to be teaching naruto that being said for the next two weeks naruto would be training on this while sasuke and zether are both kind of just kind of bored i mean they really have nothing to do and every day they would just go back to the uchiha compound and chill and just kind of train eat with each other every single day they always train no matter how tired they are because they always want to push each other to see what their limits can be now sasuke would have of course taken up on some kenjutsu because i mean seeing his bro zether do that he kind of wanted to do it himself however sasuke wants to learn a different style so he's studying the fundamentals of basic shinobi um Kenjutsu, right? He's basically doing that, and you know, that's essentially all that happens during the three weeks. That being said, this is when after the three weeks, Kakashi would tell Team 7 to meet him at the Hokage's office, and they would of course do this because, I mean, why are they not going to do it if Kakashi says so? So it's like, yeah, they get there, and of course, Kakashi immediately goes to the Hokage. He would immediately be the one who actually asked for a higher ranking mission because his team is more than ready for the mission now. The Hokage would of course see that Kakashi has Sasuke and zether on the same team would just be like yeah he's ready and seeing the fact that he has you know the fourth son with him as well it's kind of gonna be a little piece of cake for them so lord third would of course give them the mission and this is when a drunken man by the name of tazuna would walk in out of nowhere just like Ugh, these guys are supposed to protect me he would look at zether with an oversized hoodie on him like the hoodie is pretty big on him because he still hasn't grown into it at this point he's still about 12 years old right and he has like a little bit of a katana on his back you know he's wearing the shinobi pants and he's wearing the jiraiya ones you know he, he's drippy wait no 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 i don't want zether to wear the jiraiya ones zether is wearing the naruto twos right the second design of the naruto shoes yeah he's wearing those and yeah that's basically all that ends up going down he doesn't end up talking uh down upon zether and naruto that much I mean, Zether and Sasuke that much because, I mean, they both look like capable shinobis. But as soon as he sees Naruto, he begins to say, And what about you, little one with the orange jumpsuit? You know, he starts talking smack. Naruto's like, let me at him. Let me at him. And Kakashi's just like, dude, we, we're supposed to be protecting this guy. It doesn't matter what he says. We have to protect him. And we're getting paid for this. As Naruto would be like, ah, fine. And this is when they would basically be told to gather their utensils. Why did I say that, dude? I just sounded like a whole... Uh, I, I don't even want to say it, but yeah, I just sounded horrible saying utensils. Ew. You know, yeah, they grab their stuff and they basically meet Kakashi at the village gates the very next morning. Of course, everybody would actually eat this time because it's not like Kakashi was like, yeah, you guys are not going to eat because you're going to throw up. So yeah, they all end up eating. And well, this is when they would embark on their journey. About one hour into the walking, Naruto would have already been like, are we there yet? And this is when Zether and Sasuke would both look back at him as they're like, no. Immediately, Naruto would just be like, geez, I was just asking. As it to this point that Zether would immediately notice a puddle 
puddle on the ground. Sasuke and Kakashi would notice it as well, and this is when he would be like, bro, it hasn't rained. Like, do they think we're dumb? Zeta would be thinking, of course. And this is when the demon brother would jump out of Kakashi, right, just ready to take out Kakashi, right? Except... Kakashi is quite literally going to be saved by Zether in an instant. Zether would blitz at the demon brother before he gets a chance to supposedly quote unquote kill Kakashi. Zether would unsheath his katana as he would stab the blade square into the man's skull. Like it would go from his bottom jaw all the way to the top of his head going directly into his brain. Immediately, Zether would unsheathe it and he would have the blood just go everywhere. As Zether would look at Kakashi and say, Alright. He would then turn towards Sasuke's direction, who just finished saving Naruto just like he did in canon. And it's at this point that Kakashi would stop for just a moment as he sees the look in Zether's eyes. He doesn't see remorse, he doesn't see fear, he doesn't see anything. He doesn't see that Zether even cares at the fact that he just killed a man. It's strange. He sees a strong amount of darkness inside of Zether that is just ready to come out as, as on, on command, to be honest. He would then look towards Sasuke's direction and was able to handle that with a very smug expression on his face. Of course, just as swiftly as he did in canon because our boy Sasuke is built different. That being said, this is when they would basically continue to walk as Kakashi would continue thinking about this darkness within Zether, hoping that he never ends up going down the route of being in the Anbu Black Ops or nothing like that because that can seriously mess you up over the course of a certain amount of time. That being said, this is when Kakashi would end up questioning one of the brothers and he would essentially find out that they're going after Tazuna because a man by the name of Gato ended up ordering them to as a bounty. This is when Kakashi would immediately question Tazuna and he would be like, nah, bro, we ain't, we ain't doing none of this stuff, right? He's like, we, we ain't about to do none of that. Like, that's not happening. And then he basically just like... Y you know what, fine, I mean, we got Zether and Sasuke and, and myself, so, you know, we'll be fine for the mission, so I'll end up telling Tazuna that they're gonna complete it, seeing as they're already pretty far from the village, as they would continue to go on for the next three hours, I believe it is, and they would pretty much arrive near the land of the waves are, right? This is when, of course, before so, I forgot to mention something, Naruto still ends up stabbing himself just like in canon to prove that he's never gonna be afraid again, right? And Kakashi kind of just sighs and just is like, ah, whatever right they go on right after that they go on right three hours would go by and this is when a strong mist would start coming out of nowhere however before the mist can come in naruto would throw a kunai at a white snow bunny as immediately they're just like yo it's not that time of the year yet so it's like why is the bunny covered in white fur and it's at this point that they would essentially pretty much be like, all right, yeah, someone's coming. As Zether immediately senses the sword flying at their direction, immediately Zether would whip out his blade as he would he would basically do a weird Hyuga movement with his sword to diverge the blade from going to the, to the direction it was going towards, and it would stab right into the ground. Immediately, Zabuza would body flicker right in front of the blade and grab it as he would say, Kakashi Hatake. Looks like you, oh, it looks like all the hype was really worth it. You were able to deflect my sword. Kakashi would smirk a little bit and be like, yeah, bro, that wasn't me. As he would then look at Zether's direction and see that he's holding a sword. Immediately, Zabuza would say, huh, <laughs> looks like a Genin is able to do all this. Well... Let's see if you can keep up. Immediately, Zabuza would blitz at Zether's direction. And if it wasn't for the fact that Kakashi immediately just took off his, his Sharingan, Zether would have been done for. Like, it, it would have been GG for Zether, to be honest. But Kakashi jumps in and blocks the blade as immediately Sasuke would rush at Zabuza. And both Kakashi and Sasuke would, admit, would start immediately battling Zabuza. This is when Zether would just be in a state of shock. He's just like that guy as immediately the man would get enraged and just be like nah nah i'm not playing these games he would immediately blitz towards his direction as he tells kakashi and sasuke to get out of his way he would run in the water as zabuza would just smile and say come on kid immediately he would take his sword and start weaving hand sides really fast as he would say water dragon jutsu immediately a giant water dragon would come in zether's direction and kakashi would just be like no as it's at this point that zether would quite literally do a drunken movement as he would dodge out of the way and the dragon would not even touch him 
See, Zabuza Zayn went a little off. That being said, Zether would get as close enough to uh, Zabuza as he possibly can. And this one, he would start using the sort of drunken style of the Hu his drunken Hyuga Kenjutsu style, right? As he would start cutting this man Zabuza. He starts doing this man dirty, right? And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty dope. Zether has the upper hand. This is when Sasuke would jump in and start throwing kunais from a distance. And this is when Kakashi would start to charge up his... his um his chidori as immediately you could hear the thousand birds in the background as kakashi has it charged up he would tell zether to get out of the way and it's at this point that naruto would actually rush at zabuza he's like i can help too and he would come in with a kunai as he doesn't even know how to walk on water he would quite literally fall into it and immediately zabuza would grab naruto by the neck as he would say listen here i have a hostage now Either you hand over Tazuna or the boy gets it. As Kakashi would be standing there, he'd be like, all right, how do we do this? And immediately, Zabuza would just be looking at Kakashi, staring him dead in his eyes, and then looking towards Tazuna's direction. As Tazuna just falls back and he's like, I'm a goner. There's no way they're going to choose me over, there's no way they're going to choose me over that kid. And he would basically just say, don't worry. I know what I have to do. He'd begin to walk over towards Zabuza, and right as that happens, Zabuza is distracted just enough for Zether to be able to blitz Zabuza using luck and barely saving Naruto. He barely does it. See, Naruto gets cut on his neck, but it's not deep enough for Naruto to basically get any permanent damage, I guess you could say. It doesn't get nothing fatal, right? and zether was able to barely save the man that being said this is when everybody except for naruto would pretty much start pressing zabuza and this is what this would actually end up forcing haku to jump in and actually have to save zabuza far different than what he had done to in canon because in this version he was getting pressed worse dude this man had nicks and cuts everywhere uh just kakashi was charging up a chidori which was just gonna destroy the man so haku had to jump in using like as fast his speeds as he would create a giant iceberg using his ice do is using his ice uh, uh kk genkai and he would grab zabuza's he would narrowly escape the area right before kakashi was able to bust straight through the ice with the shidori um what's it called haku would have been far gone with zabuza that being said, this is when Kakashi would pretty much just say, they'll be back. As he would fall down into the ground, as he just used the Chidori, he used the Sharingan, and he was fighting for a solid 7 minutes. Don't think this battle was like 20 seconds long, because I know it sounds like that, but this battle went pretty crazy, right? That being said, Zether would basically end up throwing Kakashi on his back, seeing as he's the tallest one there. He's about, a, well, what? how tall was that? I'm, I'm just going to say he's a little bit taller than Sasuke, right? He's about two inches taller than him, right? And he throws, you know, Kakashi on his back, and they would go over to, to, to Tazuna's house to basically rest with Kakashi for the next two weeks. The first two days, they would pretty much take as they would kind of just get to know the area. And upon seeing the poverty around the place, Zether would just be... In, in just sheer just awe like he didn't know that people were struggling like this he didn't know that this is the conditions that this man gato has people living in and he would finally start believing in the cause of the bridge builder so now zether is taking this mission a lot more seriously that being said for those two weeks naruto would have ended up asking zether and naruto to essentially help train him because he feels like he's just falling behind he admits to them that well something about him just kind of for some reason he just feels so off when he's around them i mean i mean sure he knows he's not the weakest guy ever but around those two he feels as if he can't accomplish a thing and sasuke and zether would both you know acknowledge this sentiment this is when they would per proceed to essentially just be like sure and zether would feel a little bit strange about training naruto because on some degree Zether admits he has a little bit of anger towards Naruto for the death of his parents by the QB so many years ago. Even though he knows it wasn't Naruto's fault, you know, directly, he knows that the beast that was responsible for all of that is directly inside of Naruto. So, Zether just doesn't know how to feel about that, but he obviously pushes it to the side because it's just one of those lingering thoughts. Kind of like when you're at the mall and you see something cool and you're just like, should I steal it? It's kind of just one of those thoughts that, you know, we think stuff, but we never do it, right? Or so, I'd like to think that you guys don't do it. That being said, though, 
this is when they proceed to basically train him and this would basically just lead into them finally just accomplishing those two weeks after the two week mark of course kakashi would wake up and after seeing the progression that they did in just two weeks he would actually be pretty happy at the team's progress i mean it's not half bad i mean they were able to do pretty good things with naruto they ended up teaching him some extra jutsus and they started working on his chakra control and taijutsu and stuff like that it's basically what naruto worked on for the last two weeks they trained this man naruto to the verge of just death because that's how far behind naruto is in terms of zether and sasuke they're both pushing the boundaries zether is pretty op as it is from what you guys already from what you guys already know from like uh past that they're explaining his abilities up until this point and then from the fact that what's it called sasuke has the two tomoe sharingan in one eye and the one tomoe in another it's pretty broken to say the least he hasn't been able to advance his second eye to the second tomoe just because his body is simply not there yet but definitely gonna get there during the tuning exams i'll tell you guys that that being said though, this would essentially lead to the day of the bridge where, you know, they ended up going and Zabuza, I mean Tazuna was basically finishing up the bridge, you know, when Zabuza and them pulled up, right? That's the day that would basically be approaching now. This is when, you know, everybody on the team would essentially go over to the bridge and they would start helping Tazuna with building it and, you know, they'd just be overwatching him, right? This, however, is when immediately Haku and Zabuza would appear from a mist. As of course, just in this version of events, just like Naruto did in canon, and he ended up saving Inari and his mother Tsunami, he ends up doing the same thing in canon because, you know, Naruto's a whole G. Come on now, he gotta do it, you know. Naruto stayed behind because he was gonna save them. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have had Zether stay back, but I mean, honestly, I feel like Naruto just deserves the credit. That being said, this is when Haku and Zabuza would appear, and immediately Zabuza would land right in front of Kakashi as he would say, You ready for round two, Kakashi the copycat ninja? As immediately Kakashi would unveil the Sharingan and say, I am. This is when Tazuna and, no, 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 not Tazuna, but Zabuza, sorry, I keep getting confused because Tazuna and Zabuza both sound the same. It kind of is a little bit confusing to talk about, especially when you don't get to have any breaks when you're talking or else it sounds weird. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty weird. That being said though, Tazuna, oh my god, Tazuna's just standing back as the battles are basically as follows, Kakashi versus Zabuza and Haku versus Sasuke and Zether. Immediately, they would rush at each other and Haku would not even be given the chance to use his ice crystal mirrors due to the fact that Sasuke and Zether are pressing Haku pretty hard. See, Haku at this point isn't trying his hardest because, well, the fact is that he still doesn't have to because Zether and Sasuke are kind of testing out the water as well. Well, however, after about three minutes, Haku would start getting serious, and now it would be a very, very close battle. The difference is so minor that Haku just needs one mil like Haku just needs one second to use the ice crystal mirrors. That's all he needs. Just one distraction. That's basically all Haku's banking on. And Sasuke and Zether would be pressing Haku as Haku, every time she knocks one of them to the ground, the other one would get up and Zether would be using his his uh his refined style of the Hyuga Kenjutsu, aka sword style, and a Sasuke would just basically be using lightning jutsu all over the place, fire jutsu, tai jutsu, and using a kunai because, you know, that's just what Sasuke is pretty much used to using. That being said, this is when they would essentially proceed to keep fighting and they would just be using their full strength. At this point, they're all just going try hard. Like, there's not a single space for failures for either one of them because at this point Haku has just gotten over the fact that yeah he has to get rid of these two because if not his his precious Zabuza is definitely going to die because at this point Zabuza is losing pretty badly to Kakashi because he never got to see the secret of the Sharingan about how the how he can copy his jutsu and do things at the same time as him Kakashi is pulling all that stuff right now that being said Naruto would have just finished up with Inari and Tsunami and all that stuff and Naruto would come into the battlefield as he would say I made it believe it 
immediately everybody would turn towards his direction and that would give Haku just enough time to create the ice crystal mirrors and that is where they effed up immediately Haku would start blitzing them not not playing no games she would start throwing zen bonds in every direction and yes I said she because in this version Haku is going to be a she because I'm not about to thirst trap myself like I was when I first watched Naruto it's not happening not again not again Anyways, uh, yeah, of course, Sasuke and Zether would both be trying to hold their own, but these Senbon are coming at them so fast, they have zero chances to dodge. So Zether would be dodging as many Senbons as he can and deflecting them, however, he doesn't have that many areas to deflect them to, because he's kind of blocked off from 25% of the area that he could probably deflect them to because Sasuke is in there with him. That being said, this is when Naruto would be on the outside and say, don't worry guys, I'll come help, and this is when Naruto would jump straight into the ice crystal mirrors as it's at this point that the three of them are stuck fighting against Haku. Haku immediately noticing that this weakling went in he would immediately throw a full barrage of Senbon straight at Naruto's direction as Zether would say how could you he would immediately blitz at Naruto and he would jump right in front of him as Zether would take the full blast of the Zenbon or as many as they were able to land on him because he would use his sword to basically dodge a couple of them for from hitting his extremely vital organs and he would pretty much get gg'd for a couple of minutes right zether no not for minutes but he got gg'd for a couple seconds right he fell down to the ground and now he's unconscious the man is just ko'd right now for a couple of seconds right immediately naruto would see this and his heart would stop for a second it would then start beating extremely fast and Naruto's features would start becoming animalistic as he would start going through the transformation of the one tail cloak. Nah, he's not doing the aura. He's doing the entire one tail because this version of Naruto now has chakra control way sooner and now also has one thing on his side which is and it just is going to help him way more. He trained with Zether and Sasuke for that two weeks and that definitely strengthened up his body. So his body is actually able to use one tails and he would immediately start folding Haku just like he did in canon. Yeah, he would fold Haku just like he did in canon and Sasuke would go over to Zether. She's like, no, 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 no. He would start slapping Zether in the face and Zether would wake up just in time to see Naruto effing up Haku. This is when Zether would be like, yo, what is going on? And Naruto would just be folding Haku like a straight lawn chair. In this version, Naruto never ended up meeting Haku. So on the final punch, Naruto lands that hit. He doesn't stop because he sees Haku. He completely crushes Haku's skull. And at that at that same time, Kakashi just finished shoving a Chidori straight through Zabuza's chest. Both of them were taken out at the same time. That being said, this is when Haku and the threat of Zabuza just finished. This is when they would all be extremely tired and Naruto would still be on a rampage until Kakashi has to basically blitz behind Naruto and hold him as he would tell Sasuke to go behind him and knock Naruto out. Sasuke would do just that and he would chop Naruto on the back of the neck as Naruto would basically snap out of it immediately just passing out into unconsciousness. This would lead to Zether getting up and saying, I had no idea he had this much power. We stood no chance against that guy. I mean, it was barely even, but him, he's on another level. He would look towards Sasuke's direction and they would both just smile as they would say, this is great. Looks like we're all going to be pretty powerful as they're all pretty much smiling, having a good time. Gato's men would basically arrive and it's at this point that everything would start going a little bit worse than what they thought was going to happen. This is when immediately Gato's men would arrive and everybody would create clones and scare off Gato's army. However, Gato himself, yeah, he wasn't going to get away. Zether stopped him before Gato had the chance to run and he pretty much gave him to the villagers which were in that land of the hidden waves and you can only imagine what they did to Gato for the way that they had to live and the way they they had to treat their children not giving them not feeding them they were all stuck in poverty you can imagine what people would do to somebody who forced them to live like that for a certain amount of time yeah they they do horrible things to Gato to say the least and with that being said they of course end up going home now on their way home Zether would actually admit one thing to Naruto privately he would tell him that, honestly, 
he would basically confess the way that he feels so nar so i was gonna explain everything but i mean i already did earlier so i'm just gonna say zether pretty much confesses why sometimes when they were kids zether treated him the way that he did when he when he had to because i mean even though he knows naruto isn't the nine tails per se he knows that Naruto has the beast within him that murdered his family. So Zether always has an uneasy feeling whenever he was around him, and that's why everything was the way it was. Naruto would accept the apology saying that there's nothing to worry about. Now they're boys, right? And Zether would smile as he would say, yeah. As Naruto would say, believe it, he would fist bump Zether, and they would of course get to the village. With the goal of making Naruto even stronger, because if they can make him stronger, they can finally rely on him in battle without the power of that demon within him. That being said, they would pretty much start training Naruto to the brink of death for about a week. And this is when, you know, Kakashi would finally tell them about the tuning exams. However, before they get told about the tuning exams, they actually were on their way to get ramen. They decided that they were going to go, and Zether said that it was on him. So everybody basically went to the ramen shop because Naruto ended up picking. And on their way there, Naruto would notice Konohamaru running at a direction. Naruto would say, hey, Konohamaru. And Konohamaru would turn around as he would say, oh, hey, Naruto. Immediately, he would bump into Konkuro. And this is when Naruto would continue walking as he would turn the corner and see the scene Konkuro would be picking up uh, Konohamaru he's like you got some kind of death wish brat and this is when Zether would just be like oh nah he would immediately look towards Sasuke's direction and was walking right, right by him and Sasuke would basically body flicker so fast Tamari doesn't have a chance to react holding a kunai to Konkuro's neck he would tell him I'd let go of the third Hokage's grandson if I was you as Zether would stand behind Tamari and basically hold her in a headlock as he would say yeah you better listen to your friend as immediately you would see Konkuro just be like third Hokage's grandson he would immediately just drop the act and he would just be like I, I'm sorry. As he would drop uh, Kunahamaru, immediately Sasuke would just say, yeah, you better be. As Konkuro would have some inner monologue, just like, so fast. And it's at this point that Gara would notice the speed of Zether. He would say that, yeah, while Sasuke was impressive, Zether was the real one that stood out. It was as if he teleported. That wasn't just body flicker. That was completely. That was on a complete different level. That's on the stand. That's basically on the same speed as Kakashi without the shine gone. The man is cracked to say the least, right? And that being said, this is when they would basically let Konohamaru go. And this is when Sasuke would look towards Gar's direction. As Zether, of course, noticed him, but Sasuke was the first one to call him out. He would look towards his direction and say, "You there in the tree? What's your business here?" Immediately, Gara would just be like, blood. But he wouldn't even be focused on Sasuke. He would just ignore him. And he would look straight at Zether. As Zether would just say, yeah, answer the question. As Gara would immediately just send sand straight at Zether. As he would say, die. But Zether would immediately just say, what about Jutsu? As he would shoot a giant ball of water straight at the sand. As it was just a little bit of sand. It wasn't nothing crazy. And Zether basically used a water Jutsu. Causing Gara's sand to turn into a muddy liquid, right? That being said, Zether would smile as he would basically look at Gara and say, What were you just trying to do there, buddy? Gara would look at him and say, ah. As immediately, Zether would just be like, Bro, you're weird. As he and Sasuke would both teleport straight behind him or body flicker, they would immediately just be like, You want a problem? As Sasuke would be holding his kunai to him, Gara would just be, Gara would just be smiling as he would say, No none at all immediately gara would move at speeds that even they couldn't react to and it turns out that that was a clone as gara would walk by Konkuro and tamari he would tell them that it's time to go and after that they would basically save konohamaru and tell him that you know hopefully he's good konohamaru would say that yeah he's chilling and it's at this point that everybody would just be like all right that's what's up as they basically just proceed to have, you know, chill, chill time. You know, they, they basically have a pretty chill time, right? They go out to eat the ramen and, you know, Kagashi ends up telling them about the exam. They, of course, all accept because why would they not? And this would lead to another three days of hellish training for the three of them. Because not only are they going to be training Naruto. Yeah, they're going to be pushing each other to the brink of death as well. Because they better be ready for that Gara kid. That 
power that he was able to display might not be able to be taken down by just Ken Jutsu or Sasuke's normal Jutsu. He needs to develop something even further. So Sasuke would ask Kakashi to teach him the Chidori. And so Sasuke would end up learning the Chidori far earlier than in canon. However, he wouldn't master it because, you know, he's not going to master the Chidori in just one day, right? Or no, three days. Because, I mean, the Chidori is a very intense Jutsu to learn. So with that being said... We're basically going to have a mini time skip to when they essentially arrive inside of the little tuning exams place, right? They would arrive inside the building. Immediately, Lee would basically go right up to Sasuke as they walk inside. And, you know, they all know that there's Genjutsu, except for Naruto, who basically just gets snapped out of it by Zether. As Naruto was going to go over to open the wrong door, but Zether's like, bro, that's, come on now, it's Genjutsu. Naruto would be like... Oh, yeah, as he would just pretend that he knew what was going on. And Zether would just be like, bro, come on. Sasuke would look at him and say, come on, you dope, let's go. As they would basically continue walking. This would lead to a boy with bushy eyebrows and a bowl cut coming in out of nowhere. As he would kick Sasuke, but be just barely away. Basically kick towards Sasuke's direction, but not exactly make contact, right? And he would then say, Sasuke Uchiha, I want to fight you. Immediately, Sasuke would look at him and say, save it for the exams, as he would continue to walk past Lee, but Lee would go in to throw a kick as Zether would block it with his right arm. He would say, he said to save it for the exams, as he would push him away. Lee would jump back as he's like, so strong. Immediately, Sasuke would activate his Sharingan, as he would say, if you want to go, we can do it now, as Zether would basically stick his hand out and say no. We need to save our energy for the exams. You remember that guy, right? Sasuke would remember Gara and then say, yeah, you're right. As he would basically stand down and say, look, I'll fight you in the exams, but we're going to need to conserve our energy for the test. Immediately, Tenten and Neji would arrive. And this is when Neji would immediately look towards Zether's direction. As he would say, what's this poser doing here? Lee would look at Neji as he would say, ah, Neji, what's up? You know, he would just be like, hey. As Neji would just be like, what are you doing here, Zether? Immediately, he would say, he would look at Neji and say, "What? I, I could ask you the same question. Shouldn't you have taken the tuning exams last year? Neji would say, what was the point? It would have been easy. This way, it would have, it would have been a struggle when I could have just waited. It would have been way too difficult with these two holding me back. When instead, I could have just waited one more year for them to get on my level. Or similar. As Zether would just smirk and say, well, I guess it didn't take me two years. Looks like the looks like you little mid middle family branches are nothing but weaklings after all. As Neji would say, "What did you just say to me?" He would immediately activate the Byakugan, and Zether would look at him as he would say, "Ooh, scary! Don't flatter yourself. Don't ever think you're better than me, Neji." As Neji would look towards Zether's direction and smirk, he would say, "You're not even worth my time, you Yuga scum." You don't deserve to bear that crest on your shoulder. He would look right at Zether's hoodie as it's pretty oversized and Zether would say, don't you ever speak upon that again. Neji would then start saying stuff about Zether's dad and right as Zether was about to go basically destroy Neji, Sasuke was like, save it for the exams. Zether would get pretty angered by this and he would say, you're right. As it's at this point that Zether would walk past Neji and he would pretty much bump his shoulder at pretty hard as he passes by and Neji would actually try to hit the palm, tr palm strike at Zether's direction. However, Sasuke and Naruto would both immediately stop Neji from doing it. Naruto would stop him by standing in the way and holding his hands out while Sasuke basically just takes out a kunai and holds it behind Neji. Neji would smirk as he would say both of you would be taken down by me in an instant. But I guess I'll save it for the exam as well. As he would stand down, Sasuke and Naruto would both be like, alright. And Naruto would be sweating bullets. He can't believe he just did that. But it's at this point that they would go inside and they would basically leave. As this is when the third recording for What If Zether Was In Naruto starts. They would basically arrive to the location where they did in the original canon of Naruto, where, you know, they met the rest of the other Genin that were there, and just a bunch of other weird, creepy guys at the tuning exams were there as well. Bro, imagine being in your 20s and still having to take the tuning exams, bro. You gotta be a different type of week. And then looking down on the Genin that were the ones who ended up winning? Oh my god, that must sting. Anyways, that being said, 
they would of course go inside you know all getting ready to take the written portion of the exams however before that you know they would of course all meet up and shikamaru and you know everybody there would pretty much just start being like oh hey guys and they would all pretty much get to know each other except one thing is that tensions are extremely high between neji and zether see neji and zether are both kind of just looking at each other and giving each other some very dirty looks and everybody kind of notices that this is when some random shinobi comes in by the name of kabuto comes in to introduce himself and naruto sees him saying i don't need no help you hear that that goes for all of you i don't need any help me naruto uzumaki is gonna be the greatest hokage you know he would say something like that and then he'd be like believe it you know he would do that that he did in canon and this is when everybody would look at him. Of course, Naruto would immediately back down and be like, "Yo, uh, see, I was just playing." And this is when one of the one of the sound three, I don't know what it's called, but those weird guys that had like their weird sound weapons, they would come in, and one of them would actually go in and shoot an attack right at Naruto just to be like, "Oh yeah." This is when immediately Zether would pretty much blitz right in front of him, as Sasuke and Zether would have actually both done it. They would pretty much hit both of his gauntlets that produce those sound waves cracking them on site and they would humble the man see i mean sound is pretty fast but when you're faster than sound itself what's that gonna do to you right so yeah they would crack his gauntlets and that man would just be like uh and it's at this point that zether and sasuke are just like yeah you better back down buddy as naruto stood there kind of holding his hands in front of his face like getting ready to take the hit but you know zether and sasuke they're out here protecting our boy naruto until he gets time to become the goat that we all know and love that being said though this is when they would essentially go into the testing portion where everybody would go and take their assigned seats right they would all sit next to each other and this is when the test would finally begin now sasuke would take the exam and he would actually end up passing due to his knowledge see sasuke is pretty smart zether is smart as well in his own way because zether's not exactly the smartest book smart person he's more street smart i guess you could say sasuke is going to be the one that's more intelligent in this version seeing as that's kind of the thing that he took up more and zether is just kind of going to go in there as most of the questions are actually going to be multiple choice so zether doesn't even have to think about many of them except for two which are at the end now zether would have to look over right in front of a girl who's right next to him and he would look right at her paper like no f's given because a man is so lucky that he's not going to get caught he would look right at the paper and write it down as he stares right into her paper soul soul and a, a, a freaking ninja would look at zether but he would just be like bro this this guy's so obvious he's gonna fail later on so he would not say anything and zether would pretty much end up passing by cheating the entire time like he literally had to do zero critical thinking in this exam that being said everything else in the exam would pretty much remain as it was in canon and naruto would of course still have his little speech about how he's going to be the greatest hokage believe it he's never going to back down from a challenge and everybody who basically stayed would end up staying just like they do in canon this would lead to them all going outside and the situation with anko with naruto opening his big old mouth and orochimaru having that weird interaction with anko that pretty much stays the same in case you guys are wondering why sometimes i take things very very slow and sometimes i just kind of glaze through things it's because i kind of am going to be glazing through the things that remain the same such as the onko interaction that's pretty much going to be the same as in canon of course naruto speaks up his big mouth he's like hey lady and then she throws a kunai you know it grazes him orochimaru grabs it you know licks off the blood and gives it back to her and onko just creeped out by the man you know they all sign their waivers to pretty much tell everybody that yeah they're cool with dying and yeah this is when they would basically all rush into the forest. It'd be Zether, Sasuke, and Naruto. They would begin to rush inside for about a cool 10 minutes as they would finally stop when Naruto would say, Stop! This is when they would look back at him as Naruto would be like, Guys, I gotta use it. As Zether would pretty much facepalm and just be like, Bro, you had the last two hours to use it. As Naruto would be like, Yeah, but it's an emergency. As he would rush off to a to a nearby area, Sasuke would say, All right, here's the code. And Zether and both Naruto would pretty much forget it. But Zether would get it because of his luck, and Naruto's not gonna get it because of how he simply is. That being said, the snake stuff would pretty much happen with Naruto. He would get caught off guard, except oh wait, actually, no, that would actually be a lot different. See, Naruto's way more cooler in this version, I guess you could say. Way 
way more calm and collected. He doesn't even get caught by the snake because our boy Naruto ain't no B at this point in the story. See, this man Naruto was way stronger than the one that we guys all see in canon, and he can definitely handle himself a lot better than the Naruto we have in canon. That being said, they would have some pretty dope interactions and you know all the yada 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 all the good stuff and well this is when you know all the normal stuff happens that you guys would pretty much expect the snake stuff naruto destroys a snake and it's at this point that naruto would pretty much start heading over towards sasuke and zether's area however this is when orochimaru or the female version or male i don't know what that thing was that popped up in the uh chunin exams forest but yeah, that thing would pop up, basically Orochimaru, and this is when Sasuke would, and Zether would both be standing by as the ninja would come in, and he would be a Naruto clone. However, this one isn't the actual Naruto clone, seeing as it's like a, uh, a ninja hidden in the rain village, I believe it was. He would get caught, and he would end up leaving the area, but this is when Orochimaru would land in front of them as he would of course you know just be like ah, sasuke you know he'd be a weirdo about it zether would immediately look towards sasuke's direction and he would stand right in front of sasuke as he's like look bro i don't know what you want but you need to get out of here with those pedo vibes because if you don't i will decapitate you bro don't play with me immediately orochimaru would lick his lips as zether's like bro I caught you lucky! Immediately, Orochimaru would blitz towards Zether's direction as he would slash him with a kunai. However, right as he does that, Zether would substitute behind him and he would pretty much whip out his sword as he would go to cut off Orochimaru's head. However, before he gets a chance, Orochimaru would pretty much create another one of himself as he would regurgitate himself out and Zether would end up cutting off Orochimaru's, well, now lifeless head. As it's at this point that he would look towards Orochimaru and be like, bro, you're sick! Immediately, Sasuke would look towards Zether's direction and say, Zether, I got this. As he would say, Fire style, fireball jutsu. He would shoot a giant fireball jutsu at Orochimaru, which would, you know, cover the man in perfect flames. But Orochimaru would pretty much walk straight through the fireball jutsu. He would then say, My Sasuke. As it's at this point that Zether would be like, Bro, this guy is not playing no games. We need to get serious. Sasuke would immediately activate his two Tomoe Sharingan in both eyes. And Zether would immediately unsheath his katana. As he would get into a stance, he would even hold a hand sign right in front of him. The hoodie would still be oversized. He'd be looking very, very similar to the Zether image that you guys basically saw in the thumbnail of the video. By the way, guys, please let me know what you guys thought of the of the Zether, um, what's it called? The Zether art. Your boy got a commission art, and I think it actually looks pretty clean. So, yeah, just let me know what you guys think about it. This is the thumbnail art's pretty fire. I will possibly very very small chance to be having it up on screen so in case you're like just listening to me as an audiobook and you just have me in your pocket i would recommend maybe taking out your phone and checking to see if i put it up on screen the full image of my character of course and yeah that being said that basically happens now this is when Zether would basically rush at Sasuke as both of them would pretty much start tag teaming Orochimaru. Now, this is when both of them immediately get, you know, they, they get pretty serious. Orochimaru starts getting pushed on the back foot and Orochimaru starts having a bit of a harder time. See, for some reason, Orochimaru can't seem to hit Zether. Zether is lucky or something. His jutsu seem to not work whenever he points him towards Zether's direction. Zether has way too much luck on his side. This would cause Orochimaru to take a little bit of an entry on him and this is when Orochimaru would finally start going try hard mode the man would start going complete haywire as he would basically unveil that he is the legendary Sonin Orochimaru and immediately Zether and Sasuke would both just be like nah we're not playing no games they would immediately go full try hard as well like not holding a thing back and they would barely be able to keep up with Orochimaru that's actually trying Sasuke is on the back foot and, Na and Naruto right now is barely on his way this is when they would fight for a good 30 seconds until you know eventually Orochimaru gets the upper hand on Sasuke this is at the point where Sasuke is about to get the curse marsh placed on him however Zether's luck would pretty much cause for him to fall from landing on one of the trees and falling on Orochimaru's back which would lead to Orochimaru not biting Sasuke's neck and actually ended up biting the tree trunk as he'd be like ah and it's at this point that Zether would pretty much just smile as he would look towards Sasuke and Sasuke would be like bro I have no idea how you get this lucky but they would both immediately just get try hard again and they would both just like close their eyes a little bit as this is when Zether would pretty much just say nah 
Sasuke chill. As it's at this point that Zether would pretty much just start moving in a weird way. And Orochimaru would say, ah, the drunken fist. Two can play that game. Immediately, Orochimaru would begin to use that same technique. However, this is when he would be like, yo, what's going on? As it's not just a drunken fist, bro. It's the Hyuga fighting style Kenjutsu drunken fist. This is OP. This is beyond the drunken fist, bro. This is different. This is hit and different. This not only is the drunken fist, but it's luck. He never misses. So Zether would land strikes upon strikes on Orochimaru, who's even dodging some of them, but they would nick him. Not a single one of Zether's cuts would miss. And and Orochimaru would start getting very, very irked. This is when Orochimaru would start to perform a couple hand signs. He was about to summon Manda. However, before he got the chance to do so, this is when Naruto would arrive. As Naruto would come in and say, Hey, freak! Get away from my team! He would immediately say, Shadow Clone Jutsu! As he would create hundreds of clones. He would then begin to rush towards Orochimaru's direction as he would immediately start throwing the hands with Orochimaru, but Naruto's clones would get destroyed. Zether and Sasuke would create a couple of clones as well, each creating 15, and it's at this point that they would basically start trying to destroy Orochimaru with numbers, not giving him a single chance to perform a single Jutsu. That being said, Orochimaru would start getting triple teamed and he would start almost losing until Orochimaru would pretty much whip out his trump card and he would essentially go a little more tryhard. See, at this point, Orochimaru is like, nah, I'm not playing no games. And he would start using his most OP jutsus just to completely keep them on the back foot. As they start taking a fat L, Orochimaru sees an opening to land the curse mark, not on Sasuke, but on Zether. Seeing as at this point, he's way more interested in Zether because of his strange abilities. It seems so weird. It's as if Zether just gets lucky and he needs that on his side. So Orochimaru would start trying to get interested in him. He would lick his lips as he would extend his neck to go over to Zether. However, as Naruto would see this, he would immediately jump over as he would kick. He would kick Orochimaru square in the jaw as Orochimaru would get angered. And at this point, Orochimaru is like, nah, bro, you're, you're dying. I don't care if you're Minato's son or any of that. I'm, I'm killing you. He would immediately blitz at Naruto as he would land the curse mark right on Naruto's like leg area. He would land it right on his leg. Naruto would squirm out in pain. And it's at this point that Naruto would fall into unconsciousness as he would see a giant beast behind a cage, the QB. Naruto would have a conversation with it, and the QB would just be like, Naruto, I see you have come. I'm not going to do it. He would just be like, Naruto, I see you've came. And Naruto would look at the QB as he would say, Hey, I need some chakra. My friends are in danger. Immediately, the QB would be like, Ah, if you need some chakra, why don't you rip off the seal, right? And Naruto would be like, nah, bro, I'm, I'm not doing none of that. You need to pay up rent. As the QB is like, how dare you speak to me in that fashion? This is when the QB would basically realize that it's Orochimaru and that if he doesn't do anything very soon, Naruto's probably gonna die. And that means that he's gonna die. So the QB would begrudgingly pretty much give Naruto some of his chakra. That being said, Naruto would wake up like upon instant open his eyes and the curse mark would basically start going away as he regenerates it and he would see that zether and sasuke were getting folded pretty bad at this point zether was being grabbed by the neck by orochimaru and he is holding uh, holding zether up by one arm as he pretty much punched zether in the stomach repeatedly immediately naruto would lose himself to rage after seeing zether get treated like that and he would pretty much blitz at orochimaru as he would pretty much start using one tail one full tail of the QB. He would essentially start rushing at him as Orochimaru would then start getting tag teamed by Sasuke, Zether, and a one-tailed Naruto. It's at this point that Orochimaru would start losing more and more, and this is when Orochimaru would start getting put on the back foot. Two minutes would go by of this, and Orochimaru would start getting desperate. However, this is when one more ninja would be included into the mix. Anko would come rushing in after she hears the commotion and sees that that might have been Orochimaru, and this is when 
and she would arrive and Orochimaru's like, nah, bro, I'm not doing this. These kids are crackheads, bro. This, this, this kid over here does not miss a single one of his sword strikes. This one has the, the, the dope jutsu and then Naruto has the freaking nine tails and Anko has the curse mark. He's like, I ain't playing these games. Orochimaru would immediately just get hit with the meme of let him get up, let him get up as Orochimaru just pretty much reverse summons himself out of there and Anko seeing the condition of this team how they low-key did get pretty badly folded which is like yeah boys you guys were able to hold your own against Orochimaru uh, I'm pretty sure the Hokage won't mind if I let you guys pass as they all pretty much get brought in by Anko and a couple of medical ninja ninjas they would get healed up for a couple of hours and they would pretty much end up arriving about 30 minutes after Gara's team. That being said, they would after they arrive and get healed up a little bit would have to come to would have to come to the Hokage's office. As they would end up of course talking to Hiruzen, they would pretty much be on high alert after Hiruzen explains who Orochimaru is and how lucky they are to have been able to survive. Zether would point out that Naru if it wasn't for Naruto, he most likely would have died because Naruto ended up saving his life. Life. he doesn't know whether that was luck or just plot army armor because that was just straight lucky like orochimaru looked at him with the intent to slaughter the man so zether got the man got lucky to say the least right and this is when Haruzen would tell them not to worry. They're going to be on high alert. And if anything happens, just make sure they stay together. That together, they will most definitely not get folded. Because, I mean, come on now, bro. Look at them. Look at them. They are goaded. Like, these these guys are the most goaded team you guys can think of. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty fine. And that being said, this would pretty much lead to them just chilling for the next two days as that's how long it takes for the other teams to return with their scrolls and all that stuff and this is when they would pretty much have the tiny little battle portion see during those two days that they had zether's team would completely have rested no training at all because after that battle with the Maru, they were all pushed to the, the brink of near death so they're all pretty tired and naruto was the worst of it he had low stamina so he needed to eat one of those weird tofu looking ball things that give him his energy back that tastes disgusting i would never want to taste one of those things but yeah he has to eat one of those to replenish his energy and yeah this is when the battles would happen of course hiruzen would announce everything and the teams would be get picked right zether would basically be praying to his god that he could fight against neji however instead he would get even luckier and get to fight against sakura because everyone hates sakura so zether would immediately get pinned up to fight against sakura and uh to put it bluntly guys i know that you guys probably want to hear about how badly zether folds sakura but he doesn't even do that, bro. The man literally teleports behind her, body flickers basically, chops her on the back of the neck, and Sakura just gets knocked unconscious, bro. This version of Sakura still has her hair, mind you, because she didn't cut it like a dog during the fight against the, um, what's it called? The three guys with the sound weapons. I, I want to say the sound three, but they're not the sound three, because the sound four and the sound three are two different things, right? That being said, though, this would pretty much lead to a one-sided stomp. Now, we then have the fight against Sasuke and the random guy who could pretty much, like, move weird and steal chakra, I believe it was, where Sasuke ended up using the uh, Lion's Barrage to defeat him, I believe it was. Sasuke wouldn't do that. He would pretty much fold them just in the same way that Zether did to, what's it called, Sakura. And, uh, yeah, they both get pretty easy battles. That being said, this is when Naruto's battle would come around the corner, and it would be Naruto versus Kiba. Except in this version of events, Naruto does way better than in the canon. See, in this version, Naruto has way better control over his chakra. He can actually use chakra attacks. Not only that, but he has way better taijutsu skills, and he has way better analytic skills during a battle. He's been fighting against Zether and Sasuke, so, and they're like millions of miles ahead of Kiba. So when I tell you that Naruto has a hard battle, but he ends up winning that's pretty much what happens naruto has a pretty uh like pretty close battle against kiba but at the end of the day naruto is the goat and he has plot armor so of course he ends up beating kiba even with his little fang over fang stuff and all that stuff he ends up beating kiba and it's a pretty good deserved battle afterwards naruto would get offered like a little thing by hinata and naruto would end up accepting it because you know he's a chad bro he's a chad right you know he's nice 
That being said, this is when Team 7 would pretty much go by Kakashi and they'd be like, pretty easy battles, huh? Zether would be pretty disappointed at the fact that he didn't get to fold Neji like a like an omelet, but Neji would end up getting announced as the next match. It would be Neji versus Hinata, and Zether already knows what Neji was planning to do. So Zether would be on standby and telling the entirety of Team 7 to watch uh, Neji's movements. The battle would pretty much go as it did in canon. However, up until the end when Neji was about to land the final two hits, before he landed the last hit, he basically stopped him before landing the second to last hit. Zether blitzed over there and was like, nah, bro, you're not messing this Huga up. She was one of the very only Hugas to actually show me any so sort of respect. The rest of you are all scum. And yeah, they are definitely scum. They are... The, the Huga clan is pretty mean whenever they, they, you know, they want to be. And Neji would get stopped. And not only that, but Naruto would go down into the arena saying that, you know, if he ever tries to hurt Hinata again, he'll kill him, right? He would say that. And Sasuke would even be down there holding a kunai to uh, Neji's throat. Similar to the scene in Black Clover when, what's his name? That one guy that can teleport basically gets folded by his brother and Asta and the guy with the bat and the guy with the lightning. Luck, yeah, Luck would basically stop him. I haven't seen Black Clover in a minute, so apologies for forgetting the names. But yeah, that basically happens. And Neji is just shocked at the sheer speed that Zether displayed. At that point, Neji is just like, yo, like, could I actually beat this guy if I tried? But he would throw that thought into the back of his mind and continue to act cocky as he would say whatever. I guess he could spare that, you know, that main branch trash. As he would then go away, and Zether would basically help Hinata over to recovery table as she would get healed up, and it would take double less time because that second to last blow that Neji landed definitely made a difference in, when it came to her injuries. So yeah, Zether ended up saving her, and Naruto pretty much threatens and promises that he's going to defeat Neji when they fight in one month, seeing as that's basically the last battle that I'm going to be covering, and that is basically where everything ends. Oh, also, one more thing that I forgot to mention, Lee ends up fighting against Eno, and Gara ends up fighting against a random shinobi, right? And then there's two other random shinobis that also get end up getting passed through. Just no, I mean, there's one more shinobi that ends up getting passed through. It's a random one, which will lead to a pretty easy battle later on. But that's not what we care about, right? It's it's really not what we care about. So we're just going to completely oversee that. And this is when we're now basically going to jump into the one month of training. In this version of events, the one month of training that Naruto had in the canon is going to be way different than what we got in the original. See, this is going to be just completely different. This is not going to go in the way that Naruto was struggling to find a teacher. No, nah, that's not happening. See, in this version, Sasuke ends up going with Kakashi to refine his charm gone and during the one month training Sasuke actually ends up unlocking the three Tomoe in one eye and the two in the other so Sasuke ends up getting the Sharingan pretty far advanced he advances the Sharingan pretty far in that one month because he trains two times harder than in the original pushing himself to the brink of death like to the you know how there's death well, one step behind that is literal death he pretty much pushes himself to literal death where his bones break and all that stuff yeah he gets there. Zether, however, would end up using his one month to actually help train Naruto for the one month. He would train him to try to help him defeat a Hyuga. See, that's basically what Nar Naruto's training. And Zether would start being even nicer to Naruto. And he would start training him so hard that Naruto genuinely feels as if he died and straight went to hell. Because Zether's training is not human. It, it, it's not. It's inhumane. So Naruto would start wishing for death itself for about one week. As Zether would just train Naruto non-stop in how to defeat a Hyuga, their fighting styles. And Zether would fight against Naruto every day using no swords, no weapons, nothing but the Hyuga fighting style basics, until one day Naruto was able to evade, block, and even land a couple hits on Zether. Zether would smile thinking that he's going to get there. With the three other weeks that they have, Naruto will definitely get there. However, this is when after one day of training, Zether would actually say to Naruto that they should go to the hot springs. As they would go there, this is when they would run into a pervy sage by the name of Jiraiya Sensei. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know why I did that, but I did. Um, if you've gotten this far, comment, oh yeah, down in the comments. Actually, no, I did that wrong. If you've gotten this far, boys, make sure you comment, oh yeah, in the comment section because, you know, 
we do this and with that being said this is when they would pretty much start training with jiraiya for the month that they're pretty much with him they would start training with jiraiya and all that stuff and well this is when you know naruto ends up learning sage summoning he ends up learning no not sage summoning but the summoning jutsu with the toads he ends up learning the rasengan he ends up working on a shock control and controlling the nine tails during this time and zether instead ends up working on focusing more on the things that he's flawed in he tries perfecting another chakra nature and that's pretty much what zether works on during the month he would also hang out with jiraiya quite a bit seeing as zether and jiraiya actually got along quite well see zether Zether is a little bit of a um, little bit of a uh, how do I put this P E R V yeah he, he's a he's a little bit like that just a hint you know so you can definitely understand where Jiraiya is coming from when he's doing his things right that being said this version of Zether not real life Zether because real life Zether ain't no simp come on now don't play with me and it was that being said this would basically lead to Zether and Jiraiya talking. And this is when Jiraiya would look towards Zether as he would say, so, you got a sponsorship for the video? And Zether would look at him as he would say, I do. As boys, this is when I will now be introducing the sponsor of today's video by the name of Fandom. Now, they are an anime company which basically makes a lot of anime merch. Like, boys, you can see this. We got My Hero, Haikuyu, we got Attack on Titan, One Piece. We have so many selections, and what you guys do see on screen is not the only color waves that they have. They have multiple colors of different designs. If you were to maybe want a single hoodie, and it, let's say it's a pink, you don't want it in pink, well, you can change the color, make it white, make it pink, make it brown. They have a variety of selections on their shop, and honestly, it's pretty dope. I definitely am going to be having to cop myself. Let me show you guys. Oh my god, this is saucy. Tell me you don't want... Oh my god. Tell me you wouldn't cop this for yourself. There is no way you wouldn't cop this. Like, look at this. Boys, come on. You're missing out if you don't cop any of this fire merch. You have to be literally dumb to not take off the offer and not only are they offering you guys you know well good prices seeing as you know most other people be they'd be overpricing bro the other day i went to the store and they tried to sell me a hoodie for a hundred bucks like bro i get it I, I got a little bit of money but i'm not rich yo hold on now this hoodie's kind of fire now nah, but anyways okay this is a sponsor not me looking at the shop but look bottom line store is dope it would mean a whole lot to me if you guys were to at least go down below click on the link down below in the description and basically you know check out the stuff you like anything you can definitely use my code which will be down in the description of zether which will be you know down below you guys can just copy and paste it and it will give you guys five percent off off of this merch that is already most of it already 50 percent off meaning you guys will be getting a discount of 55 percent so come on now what are you guys waiting for go shop on fan Fandom now and uh, that's basically it for today's sponsor now back to the video okay so after that little um sponsorship which you guys are like yo that's, that's crazy is that they're really out here yep your boy out here you know got a little sponsorship or whatever that being said you know the training goes pretty good right naruto continues learning strategies on how to defeat the hyuga and during the time that naruto that zether has he actually ends up thinking of ways that he can actually defeat gara seeing as gara's jutsu is very very weird he would end up kind of thinking of ways that sasuke can help defeat gara because the battles in this version of going as follows naruto versus neji zether versus rock lee because they didn't fight and neji uh oh, no, no no sorry no but um gara versus sasuke just like it does in the original right now that being said this is when of course you know all the normal stuff that happens during the one month of training would you know they have a couple of funny moments here and there zether just learns a couple more jutsus from jiraiya and one thing that zether actually ends up learning from jiraiya is about the third member of the legendary sonin lady Tsunade. she's one of the gr she's the greatest medical ninja to ever live according to jiraiya and he would basically tell him stories about how Tsunade saved his life one too many times and how she's powerful and is a sl sludge sage master that that would actually end up catching zether's attention a lot 
excuse me for uh, that weird noise I just made. But yeah, that would actually end up catching Zether's attention, seeing as he doesn't really like the idea of Toads. But Sludge Sage mode sounds pretty, you know, sounds pretty dope. It, it gives you healing abilities. Zether likey. See, Zether likey likey a lot. So yeah, the man Zether is pretty stoked about meeting Tsunade. However, Jiraiya would basically tell him that, yeah, she is pretty hard. She's a part, pretty hard lady to get a hold of. And Zether would ask Jiraiya if maybe he could put in a word for him to train with her. Jiraiya would say that maybe he could. And this is when essentially that one month of training would pretty much end. That being said, it this is when they would finally get to the day of the fights and this is when we're going to jump straight into the action because there's not really too much to cover naruto would be a tiny bit late for his fight and the first fight that we are basically going to be covering is going to be zether versus rock lee now upon zether entering the stadium he would immediately look towards lee's direction who's even stronger than the one that fought garo so yeah this is about to be a pretty interesting fight see as soon as the fight starts lee he would immediately rush at Zether's direction as he would try to use his normal taijutsu. However, Zether is easily able to dodge his kicks and punches very simply with the Hyuga fighting style. Zether would use this as he looks straight at Hisashi and just is just smirk saying, yeah, a non huga member can use your techniques better. As he would even look towards Neji who's in the stands and is just disgusted at this. Zether would use those attacks as Lee would say, ah, I fought against this style every day. Zether would then throw in a couple of weird moves into the Hyuga fighting style and change it up so much that Hasashi would immediately stand up and yell at Zether saying, how dare you disrespect the Hyuga fighting style and change its properties. As Zether would continue to fight with Rock Lee, this is when Rock Lee would jump back Back, doing a bunch of backflips and he would then say i see you're very strong guy sensei forgive me as he would then say hit it lotus he would then activate the first gate as he would blitz towards zether's direction and this is when the battle would finally start picking up zether would finally start having to put in a little bit of effort and this is when kicks and punches would start getting thrown around this would lead to lee then finally being like all right so this ain't working as he would open the second gate and this is when things would finally start getting more and more interesting. Zether at this point would finally start taking Lee very seriously and using nothing but hand-to-hand -hand combat. As they would both be exchanging some deadly blows. See, Zether would get some blows landed on him by Lee. And Zether would land multiple more blows on Lee. Seeing as, you know, the man is going insane. That being said, they would continue blow going blow for blow. And this is when Lee would pretty much kick Zether just far enough for Lee to finally be able to activate the third gate. I was into this point that Lee starts blitzing this man Zether and Zether is just caught completely off guard. Zether at this point, it would basically be nothing but pure luck at as what he's basically no actually no i'm not gonna say that he gets it quite yet i think that zether could definitely keep up with third gate lee if he uses his sword style and makes very very smart decisions he does that and he and lee fight on very equal footing and this is when lee would look up at guy sensei as guy would nod to lee and this is when lee would immediately say right as he would then say primary lotus and he would basically try to kick zether into the air to get ready to do that weird little spinning attack with the band and all that stuff yeah he would get ready for all that however zether would actually substitute out of there just like gara did when he was caught off guard by it and it's at this point that lee would pretty much slap, slap a clone into the pavement as lee would be pretty shocked at this this is when lee would drop his leg weights and zether would be impressed taking that into account being like yo that's kind of fire training i might just start using weighted training myself as Lee would then blitz at this man Zether so fast that he would send this man Zether crashing into the wall, just completely leaving an indented mark of Zether's body into it. Zether would then get up pretty pissed off by that, and he's like, nah, no more. I'm, I'm not I'm not playing with you no more, boy. This this is it. You're done for. As Zether would immediately hold up a bunch of hand signs. He would then say, water style, water flooding jutsu, as he would flood the entire arena with water, causing Lee to pretty much start struggling a little bit because now, see, 
now Lee is fighting on water against Zether, and Zether flooded it to the point where they're on equal footing with the people in the arena. So Zether and Lee's punches and kicks could be felt as shockwaves. This would cause for weird, uneasy movements in the water, and Zether and Lee's battle would just be going try hard, but these boys are going insane, right? They're going crazy, right? That being said, this is when Lee would finally be forced to activate the final gate that he can use. As he would say, fourth gate, open! He would struggle so hard as Zether would then get punched, bro. This man would start getting ragdolled by Lee. And this is when Zether's luck would fully come into an effect. As Zether's luck would cause him to dodge one of Lee's kicks. And now that Lee's starting to feel the strain of the hidden lotus on his body even more, Remember, this Lee is even faster and stronger than the Lee that fought against Gara. So just imagine the monster that Zether is having a fight against. Sasuke would be watching this battle as he's just shocked at the fact that this kid can even keep up with this. See, Lee is so close to rocking Zether's whole life. However, this is when Zether would use an attack that he didn't think he was going to have to use this early on. See, Zether would then start charging up a lightning cloak around himself. See, I told y'all that Zether's, Zether's nature is lightning yeah he ended up working on a very bootlegged bootlegged version of the lightning cloak of the raikage and the raikage being in the stands is just like nah bro actually no the raikage isn't in the stands he's not present in this ver in this uh tuning exams yeah my bad i was wrong but yeah that being said he would use that and this is when zether and lee would both rush at each other as they're going so fast that everybody in the stand cannot see them zether would start using his his very dope like drunken jutsu style of kenjutsu and he would start landing cuts upon cuts on lee leaving this man to finally drop down to the ground from fatigue actually nah he wouldn't drop this man lee would quite literally get cut so many times but lee would just basically lose the fight standing up like a true g zether would see this and he would fall down onto one knee as his sword is basically the bait the only thing that's keeping zether on his feet as zether would look towards lee and he would then blow on him lee would fall down onto the ground as this is when guy sensei would come over to lee and say lee you did your best they would take Lee to the recovery place, and this is when Zether would fall onto the ground as this man would fall unconscious for the next 20 minutes, meaning that he would miss the, the, the first portion of the next battle, which is essentially going to be Naruto versus Neji. Actually, I said 20 minutes, but nah, I'm going to take that back and say he would pass out for two minutes. He needed those two minutes he basically took a power nap during that time and this is when naruto versus neji would start now this is when this battle is going to go completely different than the one that we had in the original canon see this version of naruto doesn't need to pull no weird tactics or even use the power of the qb he doesn't even need it the man is built different in this version he spent an entire month fighting against somebody who knows the exact fighting style of the gentle fist so yeah this man zether basically came in clutch and naruto would actually keep his distance from neji seeing as neji has a very limited range however whenever he would get close he would go for very quick attacks on neji which neji wouldn't even be able to perceive naruto would move so fast that neji is just just getting combo wombo to say the least and naruto he pretty much ends up beating neji to say the least naruto ends up pretty much folding the man like a lawn chair and after the battle and right in the middle of the battle naruto would be just smiling as he's just thinking of zether in his head about how if it wasn't for him he probably would have lost his battle however naruto would end off the battle with a rasengan as he would smash it right into neji's stomach saying and that's what you get for messing with Hinata as he would be out of breath Naruto would end up winning the battle as yep at the end of that Zether would pretty much body flicker down to the ground after it was announced that Naruto was the winner and he would then land in front of Neji as he would say how does it feel I trained him to beat you if it wasn't for my my ability to use the Hyuga fighting style he probably would have lost now just imagine what I could do to you as he would give him a stare that emanates pure death he would quite literally look at him with so much bloodlust that Neji just passes out as Zether would then go back up to the stands and this is when Sasuke versus Gara would finally begin. See, the fight would go pretty much 
exactly as it does in canon. See, I would say that Sasuke would be able to fold Gara similar to Fourth Gate Lee. However, Gara immediately starts off by using his perfect little sand shield, right? So yeah, Sasuke is forced to use the Chidori off rip and stabs right into Gara. Except this time, it's not like he stabs into him and makes him bleed a little bit. Nah, see, Gara when he gets stabbed. This man Gara gets stabbed in the chest. He is critically injured. This man Gara is down. He's down for the count. He's not waking up until medical ninjas help this man because he's in critical condition. And Sasuke would end up winning the match. That being said, this is when a lot of things would finally start going a lot different. See, since Gara isn't unconscious, this means that Team 7 doesn't have to go chasing after him and they would be in the village. That being said, when Orochimaru starts his attack and everything starts going downhill, the little uh, Genjutsu gets placed and everybody passes out into unconsciousness, all that goes way different than what it did in canon. Way, way different. I cannot stress the way different enough, okay? That being said, this is when, you know, of course, my boy Naruto, Sasuke, and Zether would all be pretty tired from their matches, with the exception of Sasuke, because the man only had to use one Chidori, and he folded this man Gara like a lawn chair. Just imagine what he could have done if he didn't use that weird little sand dome shield. Yeah, Gara would have died if it wasn't for the fact that Sasuke aimed for the left part of his chest. So, yeah, that's basically when this entire attack is going to go so much different. See, Team 7 would end up going over to fight against Team, uh, what's it called? The Sound 4 Ninja, which are putting up the 4 Trigram Barrier. I believe that's what it's called, right? Basically, the barrier that made it so that ninjas couldn't go in to help Peruzin, that isn't happening. So, a bunch of ninja which could have had the ability to help Peruzin with this battle, such as Kakashi, would end up rushing over there as Guy. And, well, I'm going to say that Guy and Naruto would be the ones who are handling the fodder shinobi down. As Zether and Sasuke are tasked with defeating the full scale power of Team, of, uh, of what's it called? The Sound 4? Yeah, the Sound 4, right? They basically have to fight against the Sound 4 and um, Sound 4 get clapped. The Sound 4 get obliterated, bro. Like at this point, Zether and Sasuke are way past their... Sasuke is far past his Valley of the End strength. He is way more broken than that. And Zether is even stronger than that. So just imagine. Yeah. Imagine what would happen. They would pretty much get fondled. They would get ragdolled. They would get obliterated okay it's not funny this is not okay they basically hit with the let him get up let him get up meme except they wouldn't get up they would just completely get stomped on and this means that Hiruzen would not end up losing his life to Orochimaru Orochimaru in this version instead ends up getting all the way effed up this man Orochimaru is down for the count like Orochimaru is not going to get the chance to hoe our boy Hiruzen instead Kakashi's there so he's able to help Hiruzen out with the battle and this leads to Hiruzen never having to use that weird little juice and the first second and fourth uh, and third no wait no the first second hokages don't even get called up because orochimaru doesn't even have the chance see kakashi comes in clutch with the sharingan and all that stuff and orochimaru has to reverse summon himself away from the village because if it wasn't for that orochimaru probably would have died quote unquote died because this man never dies he literally got sealed by the kusanagi blade wait no it's not kusanagi. wait is it the kusanagi blade the Yadamir and the Tosca, no, the Tosca Blade, I'm sorry, the Tosca Blade, and he still didn't die, so yeah, that tells you a lot about Orochimaru. That being said, this, it would basically lead to uh, a lot of changes in the series. Sasuke ends up staying in the village during the three-year time skip, and after the attack, they basically have a very, very uh, brief cleanup period, which lasts about a week. However, during that week, Hiruzen basically ends up deciding that he's way too old to continue doing this Hokage stuff. So he ends up trying to appoint Jiraiya as the next Hokage. However, we all know our boy Jiraiya. He's like, nah, I'm not doing that, bro. I still need to clap more cheeks. I'm not about to step down from the <laughs> game. You know, he's not about to do that. So he would say, how about we go get Tsunade, you know, the legendary loser. As, you know, they're like, yeah, I mean, sure. And he would end up asking Naruto as basically his uh, godson to come along with him. However, so, uh, Zether hearing about this would be like, nah, bro, you got to take me. I want to meet Tsunade. And Sasuke hearing that be like, Tsunade, who's that? Um, essentially, what's it called? Um, 
Jiraiya would tell Sasuke, and Sasuke would be like, oh, you, oh, say less. I want power. Come on, don't play with me. I'm trying to kill Itachi. And Zether would say, nah, 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 nah. See, you're not going to kill Itachi. We're going to kill Itachi. They would both look at each other as they would fist bump, and immediately, they would pretty much proceed to head on their way for the search of Tsunade. However, Future Me is going to end up covering the rest of the story later on. Okay, so yeah, the team basically ends up grabbing all their essentials like ninja tools and some food and some water and stuff. You get the point. They get their stuff ready and they basically start heading out. Now, on their way to go basically find Tsunade, it's going to be during the stretch of a one week period. Now, on the way, Zether and Naruto and Sasuke are all basically talking to each other. And the question comes around that when is Zether going to develop his own jutsu on the same type of level as the Rasengan or the Chidori? And to put it simply, Zether just looks at them like, what do you mean? And they'd both be like, I mean, well, I have the Chidori and... Naruto has a Rasengan, but when are you going to develop something like that? I mean, up until this point, you basically only have had a sword. What happens if the sword isn't strong enough? This is when Zether would basically start thinking and he'd be like, yo, you kind of right. As he'd be like, kind of right. And he would then basically look at them as he would say, all right, I definitely should actually develop something similar to that, right? As they'd be like, I mean, yeah, if you want, we could help you out. Zether would be like, nah, I, th I think I have a good idea of what I want. He would then think that mine attack is going to look even better than both of yours. As Sasuke would smile, being like, huh, sure. And it's at this point that they would continue just walking. As they would continue basically asking a couple of questions to Jiraiya along the way. Asking Jiraiya, what is Tsunade like? What is Tsunade like as a ninja? Now, Jiraiya would begin to explain what Tsunade was like having her as his teammate. And pretty much start overhyping her. Have you guys ever had a friend who you think is like honestly so awesome, but for some reason, in, you introduce them to someone else and they're like bro what's up with your friend yeah that's basically what's going to happen now jiraiya is over hyping tsunade from what he can remember from her and they're just all just like yo we cannot wait to meet this person now of course they would basically you know they'd have some normal interactions here and there zether would start working on his new technique which will be unveiled the second he uses it so y'all are not going to get to find it out until way later on now they would of course all do their own separate training and along the way naruto would basically start trying to add variations to the rasengan adding different natures however he would fail and this is when he's barely going to start trying to upgrade the rasengan and make sure that zether doesn't catch up he would also be working on a shock control trying to master wind nature because that's the one that he's basically working on the most and well it's at this point that zether would pretty much just continue doing the training and all that stuff right now this is when of course they would finally basically arrive to a hotel right seeing as there's really nothing to cover in terms of them like on their way until the point where they get to the hotel stuff and all that little ichi ichi girls happen stuff i why did i say it like that until jiraiya has to go look for some little uh you know some little some females i guess you could say right because we are no we already know our boy jiraiya the man is built different right and uh yeah they basically arrived to the same town in which kisame and itachi are looking for them oh and in case you're wondering if that whole kakashi stuff with the genjutsu and stuff happens yeah it does happen and like it does in the original that being said it, they would basically arrive to the hotel where jiraiya gives them the keys and he's just like yeah boys uh just go over there i'm gonna get there like later as he spots a girl and he's like hey there beautiful she would immediately be like creep and she'd walk away as jiraiya's just like oh man this one zether would start chuckling saying bro has no hoes as they would just walk away and it's at this point that they would pretty much make it to the hotel they would pretty much start chilling and zether would continue thinking of ways that he can perfect this technique at this point he has the technique but he doesn't exactly use it perfectly every time he still hasn't mastered it he needs to find a way to master it quicker and this is when zether would actually discover the shadow clone technique essentially allowing him to create multiple shadow clones so that they can all pretty much gain the experience and he would gain a solid he would create a solid 20 as everybody is pretty much doing their own thing see naruto is outside working on the rasengan and sasuke right now is currently taking a shower so zether would have more than enough time to basically work on the twin lion fists yep 
that's what I want him to learn. Because, I mean, bro, the twin lion fist looks so badass. But for some reason, people just don't like... People just stopped using them. Like, it's as if people just don't care about them for some reason. But I do. Oh, I do. I care about them. They look so badass. And my character has to have them. Because everything about Zether is going to be badass. And with that being said, this is when they will basically arrive at the hotel. Where they... I already... I already said that. And by, by hotel and arrive, I basically mean um, Kisame and Itachi. They would both arrive there as Zether just basically finished wrapping up with his training and Sasuke is at this point already dressed. This is when they would get a knock at the door and somebody would say room service as Zether would basically go over to open the door. However, before he opens it, he would actually end up spotting a dime on the floor. He's like, oh, lucky. He would end up grabbing it as it's at this point that Sasuke would be like, wait, as he would pretty much use a Sharingan and immediately realize that there's somebody behind there. Immediately upon realizing that, he would just be like, nah, Naruto's, I mean, nah, Zether, something's going on. As he would look towards Sasuke's direction and say, all right, then get ready. Sasuke would immediately get a sword out and Zether would as well, as they would both pretty much get ready and Zether would create a clone, who would open the door and immediately Itachi would put the clone under a strong genjutsu. But right as he does that, the clone would fall onto the ground and Zether would blitz right at Kisame, as he would try to slash his chest, but Kisame would block it with the sword and immediately Sasuke would say, ITACHI! As it's at this point that he would rush towards his brother's direction and he would immediately try to basically fight him off. However, it would be very, very similar to the beginning of the fight with Sasuke and Itachi. The final fight, the very beginning where they threw shuriken and stuff like that. That's basically what the fight between Sasuke and Itachi is consisting of up, the, up until this moment. And Itachi is actually very surprised at how strong Sasuke's gotten to this point. He already has the full three Tomoe Sharingan on each eye. And it seems as if his friend isn't half bad as well. He's able to keep up with Kisame at 20% up until this point. This is when Zether would be like, huh, looks like you're not that bad. And Kisame would smile as he licks his blade. Zether at this point would basically get into his weird position that you guys see in the thumbnail, where he would go to basically, he would go to basically sheath his sword as it has a little bit of blood on it. So he would take it off and he would then basically spin it in his hands as he would pretty much hold it and he would then hold out a chakra symbol, a chakra hand sign, not symbol, but a chakra hand sign as he would then say, water stop. Kisame would immediately smirk as it's at this point that he would not do a thing but then Zether would then out of nowhere blow out a gigantic a burst of flames right at Kisame's direction as Kisame would get thrown off guard so he thought Zether was going to do a, a water water jutsu which he was not worried for because the man is a literal shark but then Zether was like, nah, bro, I'm tricking you. And he basically pulled a fireball jutsu, which he shot straight at Kisame. Now, after hearing all the commotion, Naruto would immediately rush over there as he's like, yo, what's going on? And upon seeing that, he's immediately like, yup, gotta go get Jiraiya. He would, immediately, uh, he would immediately create a clone as the clone would start rushing over to get, get to Jiraiya and he would join in the fight as he would begin to help Itachi. However, as soon as Naruto tries it, Itachi would immediately put him under the infinite Tsuki Yomi. And Naruto, um, put bluntly, Naruto gets taken out pretty badly. See, Naruto, he has a pretty strong resistance towards Genjutsu. He has a nine tails within him, but it's the infinite Tsukiyomi. And if Kakashi was put in bed rest for at least that much time, then Naruto will definitely have the same thing happen to him. So, Naruto gets GG'd. However, not before the clone gets to Jiraiya and tells him to go back there under basic trouble. That's when the clone basically disperses and Jiraiya would immediately start rushing at that direction at full speed. Now, he'd basically be hauling ass pretty much. Now, it's at this point that Zether would essentially see that Sasuke was on, was losing really, really badly to Sasuke. I mean, Itachi was losing really, really, uh, no, 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 not Itachi, but Sasuke was losing horrendously to Itachi. Itachi was landing every single strike he wanted to land. And whenever Sasuke did land a hit, it looked as if Itachi just let him from his perspective. So this is when Zether immediately turned full throttle. He went from zero through to a hundred real quick. And he proceeded to base basically like go limp as Kisame went to slash Zether however before he could land the slash Zether would 
basically open his eyes and upon instinct Zether would slash up as he would slash Kisame right across the chest leaving a permanent scar as Zether would basically proceed to he would F Kisame up pretty much he would mess the man up pretty badly right and after this, Zether would immediately rush towards Sasuke's aid, as Sasuke at this point was getting held up by the neck by Itachi, just like in canon, telling him that he needs more. However, before he was about to say hatred, Zether would kick Itachi square in the gut, sending him crashing into the wall, as he would say, he needs my backup. As he would look towards Sasuke and say, you okay? Immediately, Itachi would throw a shuriken, which would expand into two, and it would then be a wire shuriken, as Zether would basically through sheer luck would basically cut the wire and it's at this point that he would look towards itachi's direction as he would hold the blade at itachi's neck itachi would smile thinking that this kid may definitely be a very capable shinobi someday however this ends now as itachi would go to basically use a matarasu before he arrives Jirai, before he does it though jiraiya would arrive and he would immediately use the toad mouth jutsu as he would have kisame and itachi within it as immediately itachi is like nope and he would shoot the matarasu flame straight at the toad's mouth as he's like yeah it's not time for sasuke to kill me just yet i gotta go he would grab kisame as they would both leave the area immediately and Jiraiya would be like, okay, kind of glad they left, not going to lie. Because if I had to fight them, I don't know what would have happened. But this is when Zether would rush towards Naruto's direction and say, Naruto, Naruto, are you okay? Immediately, Naruto would look, would open his eyes as he's like, oh. and he would just literally be laying there like a literal vegetable. This is when they would have to wait a couple of hours until Mike Guy would pretty much arrive and take Naruto back to the village because Naruto is in pretty critical condition. I mean, he's in the same state that Kakashi's in, so they definitely need Tsunade now. That being said, this is when Zether and Sasuke would get so triggered, like they are enraged at what just happened to Naruto, if only they were stronger, they would have been able to defeat Itachi, and maybe, just maybe, Naruto would have never gotten hit by that Genjutsu. They would both immediately be feeling so weak, and Jiraiya would start doing his best to try to make it up to them, but Sa Sasuke and Zether are both just unconsolable. They would both immediately start training harder than they've ever trained for the next couple of days, and this would lead to Zether and Sasuke doing extremely intense training, until they basically meet Tsunade at the bar. Now, this is the day where they arrive at the bar. See, Sasuke and Zether both were pretty hungry after a day of training. And Jiraiya would have ended up telling them that he'll treat them. As they would go inside of a little bit of a pub. And this is when they would make it inside. He would ask for some, they would ask for a table. And immediately, Jiraiya would notice Tsunade sitting down at one of the tables. He would immediately look towards Sasuke and Zether. And they would both lighten up. As they're like, Naruto! He could get healed. They would immediately rush to the table as Tsunade's like, who are you two? As Tsunade's drunk, right? Tsunade's drunk and she's like, yo, who are you two? Immediately she would see Jiraiya sit down and she's like, oh, what do you want? She would look at Jiraiya as Jiraiya would say, listen, Tsunade, the village needs you. It was recently attacked by the hidden as she would say, Sand Village? Yeah, I know. And let me guess, you need my help to go heal a bunch of people, right? Well, if I'm going to be doing that, you better be paying off at least three of my tabs. As Jiraiya would say, no, that's not what we came here for. He would then look at Tsunade and say, listen, Tsuna, we need you to become the fifth Hokage. Tsunade, after hearing that, would laugh in Jiraiya's face. And immediately, Zether would just, seeing the state that Tsunade is in, would say, you know, Tsunade. As Tsunade would say, who's this brat? Immediately, Zether would look at her as he would say, you know, Jiraiya praised you so highly to think that you wasted your life like this after of all of the great things that I heard you did. You and the team that you were on with Orochimaru and Jiraiya were the legendary Sonin someday. And now, you're nothing but the legendary loser. As after hearing that, Tsunade would get so triggered, bro. She would get so triggered that she would punch Zether square in the gut, sending him crashing straight through the the pub doors as zether stands up immediately 
and is enraged. This man is so pissed because not only is does he have the anger of Itachi not being able to destroy him along Sasuke, but he's also remembering his father. He's realizing that he failed Naruto and he's thinking that I'm so lucky for what? As he would then rush at Tsunade and immediately Tsunade would try to dodge the attack, but Zether would literally slash her arm off as he would say, I heard you have pretty good healing regenerative properties, right? Tsunade would look at Zether as she would immediately see the blood and she would heal up, bro. She's so drunk, she forgets her weakness as she proceeds to basically grab the arm and put it back on as she would rush at Zether. Her and Zether would basically get into a big brawl as she would start creating cracks in the ground punching hard zether would use his katana to deflect her attacks and it's at this point that zether would call her a fool as it's at this point that zether would literally put his katana back in its sheath and stand on the opposite side of tsunade as zether would basically get into a perfect stance and it's at this moment that deku would use the 64 trigram attack as he would immediately disable each and every single one of tsunade's chakra points tsunade would be standing up as her regenerate properties are healing her up but this is when zether would pretty much proceed to use the twin lion fist barrage as he would smash 36 hits of the twin lion fist and tsunade would get obliterated like i'm not playing these games zether's luck combined with the twin barrage he hits the perfect point and destroys her whole chakra system she has zero chakras to help her and she is unconscious dude she's going to be out for at least the next two days that being said zether is pretty much told by jiraiya that you know he didn't have to take it that far and zether just gives jiraiya a pissed off look jiraiya sees that and he's like yep yeah, not gonna mess with that and after that happens about two days would go by with zether and sasuke training hard this is when zether basically finally heals up from the rib that tsunade broke with the punch that she landed and this is when tsunade would finally wake up two days later as her helper what's her name um What's the name of that lady that helps Tsunade out with her stuff? I don't know, but you know, the girl with the pig, right? She basically tells Tsunade what happens that a kid, a genin, folded her like an omelet while she was using her 100 healings technique. And Tsunade, after hearing that, is livid. She would immediately be like, I need a rematch. He only won because I was drunk. Now, this is immediately when her assistant would be like, bro, you need a rest. Look at the condition he left you in. Tsunade would see the battle damage and be like, this kid. And she would start healing herself up and see, and say, nah, see, I'm good now. As it's at this point that they would be just chilling down and Zether and Sasuke would finally have gotten over that Itachi situation. They would both be laughing as they would say that no matter what, the next time they encounter Itachi, he's not going to live to see another day. As Ita Tsunade would bust straight through the door and be like, Kid, I need a rematch. Immediately, Zether would start laughing as hard as possible as he would pretty much tell her that he's not going to give her a rematch. But Tsunade would be like, nah, 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 nah. See, that's, not, that's, what, that's what you're not about to do. Tell me what I can and can't get. I'm getting that rematch. Zether would smirk as he would say, all right, I'll give you a rematch on two conditions. As Tsunade would say, what are they? As Zether would look at her and say, I need you to heal my friend Naruto. He was injured against a fight with Itachi and Kisame of the Akatsuki. And he would then look at her and say in the second one, is if I can beat you, you have to become the Hokage to the Hidden Leaf Village. Tsunade would start laughing uncontrollably and then say, kid, the only reason you got so lucky last time was because I was drunk. You won't even be able to land a single hit on me. As Tsunade immediately activates the 100 seal technique and activates her slug sage mode. As she would say, come on. She would say one hit. That's all I need. And Zether would laugh as he would say, all right. He would immediately not even charge anything up as Zether would just stand there. And immediately Tsunade would blitz so fast she wouldn't notice but there would be a pebble on the ground. As she would slip and fall and Zether would body flick her and flick her on the head. Tsunade would get so triggered that she would punch the ground leaving a crater so giant bro. It's the size of a forest. 
Zether would start dying of laughter and Sasuke would as well. Jiraiya would and Tsunade would be livid, but she would be like, all right, deal's a deal, whatever, as she would be forced to go back to the village. And remember how I said that Orochimaru got folded really badly? Yeah, he never ended up losing his arms, though, so he still was able to continue doing his thing, so he doesn't need Tsunade, meaning that that whole encounter with Tsunade, Jiraiya, Naruto, that never happens. Also, Naruto's out of commission, so it's like, even more it won't happen. That being said, this is when Zether would basically start getting to know the not so, you know, the sober version of Tsunade. And he would actually realize that she's not that bad when she's not drunk out of her mind. And so, this is when the three year time skip will commence. Tsunade would have basically arrived at the village after that and you know she would basically do her healing. She would go on to become the Hokage and she would start assigning missions to people as during the three year time skip. See, Zether and Tsunade would have actually gotten along very well. Tsunade loves, I mean she loves Zether. I mean it's her little good luck charm. Every time she has Zether around her, she always seems to win at card games in every single bet. So she just need Zether there at all times. Sometimes she doesn't even tell, take him on missions because she would rather start gambling with people. And she finally was able to start paying back her tabs as, yeah, Tsunade is living a dream. However, this is when Zether would finally ask something of her. He would tell her that he wants to learn medical ninjutsu as Tsunade is just like, sure if you can beat me at a bet zether would start laughing and she would start laughing as well and she would say nah totally kidding kid i'll definitely teach you as for the next three years she would basically become zether's teacher on medical ninjutsu and she would teach him everything i mean everything he's not like sakura sakura had great chakra control but zether has a massive chakra pool this man has one equivalent to that of naruto so when it comes to charging up the little uh, little seal that he's gonna have not on his forehead because my boy Zether's not going to be ugly and have that ugly ass thing on his forehead. Nah, he has it on his wrist. Yeah, he has it on his wrist. That's where he charges it up, right? He has it on his wrist and uh, man, Zether's pretty broken, bro. Imagine Hyuga style fighting style, like Hyuga fighting style, medical ninjutsu, Byakugan, which uh, in case you forgot, he still hasn't implanted it into himself. But uh, over the three year time skip, guess what he did? Yeah. Tsunade implanted that thing into him and now Zether is a different type of monster if if I'm keeping it a buck with you guys imagine this imagine this you're, you're scrolling across the street right you see some kid you want to you want to scrap with him but then it turns out he has luck literal luck on his side it's even better than plot armor because he's now the main character he has a huga fighting style the huga fighting style with the sword he has medical ninjutsu he has all five chakra natures it's not okay bro it's not okay like it's it's really not no oh and also he has a lightning cloak and um one thing i forgot to mention he has slug sage mode yeah he learned slug sage mode over the time of the three years and now i bet you're probably wondering all right Zether learned all that. What did Sasuke and Naruto learn? Well, they both ended up learning Toad Sage mode. Sasuke ended up developing so many lightning jutsus. He even made Indra's arrow. And he ended up not unlock. Oh, actually not, because he can't technically use the Susana without the arrow thing. But no, he didn't make that. But he made the Kirin and he made more OP jutsus with the weather and all that stuff in and of itself. Naruto got the flying Raijin. He literally got the Rasen Shuriken. He ended up making variants of the Rasengan. He got all five chakra natures down. Naruto's a different beast. And he even ended up mastering Cube, the uh, like six tails of the QB without going insane. He still hasn't befriended the QB though, so don't don't get that twisted. And uh, when it comes down to the fourth great shinobi war, this is about to be a slaughter. So from now on. I'm probably going to be speed blitzing the series, but with that being said, future me is going to be having to take the wheel. Actually, nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna keep it going. I'm gonna keep it going. I want to keep it going. Like, come on now. Zether's pretty broken. Naruto's broken. Sasuke's broken. They're all broken. The only reason that Sasuke, Sasuke's probably the weakest one up to this point, seeing as he still doesn't have the Susano and all that stuff. But trust me, boys, he will have that that Susano very 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 soon and with that being said 
you guys are probably wondering when are they going to do the gara retrieval yeah they're not actually going to do that i mean they probably would if gara was the hokage but i mean the kaze kage but if you guys do remember he never got the takno jutsu from naruto so he's never ended up turning quite well gara ended up being taken from the akatsuki a long time ago and the man um uh, the man got mollywop bro the man got Mar mollywop Conqueror is now the the kaze kage of the hidden village in the sand and that's pretty bad because conqueror is not even that strong so it's like they're the weakest nation at the moment and uh pretty tragic stuff yeah pretty pretty tragic stuff right they clearly don't have luck on their side like the hidden leaf village now over the time you guys are probably wondering yo zether what's the ship Come on now, bro. You already know Zether ain't gonna have no ship. What, what do I look like having a ship? I got a ship in real life, bro. I don't need this in Naruto. Come on, I don't play with me. Anyways, that being said, though, seeing as they all pretty much stayed in the village with the exception of Naruto and Sasuke, who actually... No, 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 Naruto... Mm, Naruto went away for one year to learn uh, basic things like the Ross and Shuriken and all that stuff and Sage Mode. And then Jirai came back and for that first year, Sasuke trained with Kakashi learning the Kirin and all that stuff. For the second year, Sasuke ended up learning Ki uh, Sage Mode, Toad Sage Mode. And for the third year, Sasuke ended up developing more and more Jutsus, working on other things such as, you know, uh, I don't know. He just got OP, okay? He got OP, that's the point, all right? Sasuke is not really going to get too broken up until I give him the Susano, which is going to be a little bit later on down the line. So, with that being said, a lot of the problems that ended up happening in the original canon version of Naruto don't happen in this version. See, Sasuke never went with Orochimaru, no conflict with Orochimaru at the bridge. Sasuke didn't go with Orochimaru, they didn't have to do the Sasuke retrieval arc. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Everybody stayed in the village, so really a lot of conflicts were avoided. And the fact that Gara basically got extracted a long time ago means that they're not even going to be having the Kaze Kage rescue mission. So during the time that they're basically here after the three year time skip they just go on basic missions team seven is like the biggest breadwinners of the leaf village because i mean they complete missions in record times they do missions that usually take like weeks to do in days and they're just broken bro you got kakashi who at this point now actually has a way better understanding over the mangekyo the mangekyo sharingan because well you know he actually trained more with the eye and it definitely definitely helps out with the things that he basically has to do and that being said it's a uh, it's pretty it's a pretty chill time overall the only real thing that now i have to pretty much time skip to is the day that well sasuke and zether now have to fight against itachi but before I get into the fight against Itachi, there is something that I have to cover. I have to slowly work myself into it. And there's a couple of things that I am going to mention through a brief flashback with Naruto and Sasuke. I bet you guys are wondering what the Hyuga clan did to Zether when he got the Hyuga Dojutsu. Yeah, y'all are about to find out. So after they basically complete a mission, Zether and Sasuke would basically end up going to the Hyuga compound. And it's at this point, no, 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 not the Hyuga compound, but they end up, no, yeah, they end up walking by the Hyuga compound. And this is when Zether would basically bring up to Sasuke, yo, Sasuke, remember when uh, when I got this, this uh, the dojutsu in my eye? Sasuke would look at Naruto and just start cracking up immediately. He's just like, yep, like it was yesterday. As... He would basically say, it took you a while to get adjusted to it, didn't it? As Zether would just be like, a little bit, a little bit. And Sasuke would be like, yeah, I guess. As he would say, but you're not half as cool as me. I actually have two Sharingan in my eyes. As Zether would just be like, bro, whatever, bro. I mean, at least I have a Hugh, uh, at least I have a Dojutsu, right? Sasuke would be like, sure, sure, sure. And he would then say, what's a chakra drain like? Zether would just be like, it's actually not half as bad as he, as uh, Kakashi Sensei's, but you know, it's chilling. And this one, they would basically arrive back at the, uh, what's it called? The, um, the compound which Sasuke lives in, the Uchiha compound. Yeah, I'm so dumb. They basically arrived at the Uchiha compound, right? 
they would get there and this is when sasuke and zether would basically begin to talk about things zether would be like yeah you remember as he'd basically start telling what happened on that day but you guys are wondering what happened to zether when he got the dojutsu implanted into him okay so when he got the dojutsu implanted into him that would have actually been about one year before the three year time no no not one year but two years into the time skip right at this point zether had already been well into learning medical ninjutsu and already had mastered the basics of medical ninjutsu apart from the little byakuya seal which essentially stores up a chakra right and at this point zether had already have had already had mastery over the twin gentle fists and all that stuff not only that but he ended up mastering the hyuga fighting style even more because he ended up going on a mission with hinata who actually ended up teaching him a little bit more of the hyuga fighting style because you know he did save her life from neji so it's like a favor for another favor and well after that mission zether decided that you know it was time to finally get that eye back and, you know, it was on his father's birthday that day, so Zether decided that it was now time to honor his father's wishes. He was finally ready. Zether decided to tell Tsunade to do the procedure, and when she did it, and Zether got the dojutsu, literally while he was on his way to walk to the, to the Hyuga, I mean, no, to the, um, ah, why do I keep not being able to say, what clan is Sasuke from? Uchiha, yes, the Uchiha compound, I'm so dumb, yeah, the Uchiha compound, the Hugas were not happy with it, bro. Like, a random Huga saw that, and they're like, nah, bro, we ain't playing these games. They told Asashi, and Hasashi, instead of going to Haruzen, he decided to literally bring in a bunch of Huga that were just all going to destroy Zether. However, it didn't go too well for him, and uh, Neji was actually part of this Huga. See, it was Sasuke and Zether who were home that day, and when they knocked on the door, Zether was tired, bro. This man was irritated. He ended up getting hoed from his payment from the guy that was supposed to pay him, but seeing as Zether already has a lot of money, he didn't care, but, you know, it kind of is still irritating, right? Not only that, but Sasuke didn't wash the dishes like he was supposed to, so Zether was already pissed off, and this is when they would come basically busting in straight into their home as Hisashi would say you have something that belongs to us as Zether would just say what are you talking about as he has a smirk on his face Hisashi would immediately look at Zether's direction as he would say how dare you wear that wear that eye on your head as Zether would say it's a gift from my father what are you gonna do take it from me Hisashi would try to rush at Zether and use the gentle fist as Zether would drop all of the things that he has and get into a better state in Hisashi as he would use the twin lion fists as he would obliterate Hisashi and the entirety of the Hyuga clan like like 50 plus members would see as Hisashi would get straight folded the rest of them would rush at him and Sasuke would come in and he's like nah y'all really think y'all finna mess with my boy they would both immediately just go off bro Th they went crazy they would destroy each and every single one of the Huga members that had a problem with it. It was not funny. It was not funny whatsoever. It it was it was very, very bad, right? It was very bad. All of them got molly wiped. They they all got molly wiped pretty much. They got fondled. They got obliterated. I can't even begin to think of the word for what they had done to them. And after that day, Hisashi tried to go with Lady Tsunade, talking about some, that's our dojutsu. But, you know, that is Tsunade's, like, favorite person in the world. Like, she loves Zether, bro. You will not understand. Like, he, he's basically her lucky charm. She'd be like, nah, bro. Like, if you mess with him again, I will literally destroy your entire clan. And Hisashi's just like, I dang. But, yeah, Zether keeps the dojutsu, and there's not a thing they could do about it. That being said, you guys are probably wondering, what about Kakazu and Hidan? Well, at this current moment, uh, well, at this current moment, I bet you guys are also wondering why Zether and Sasuke are going through their life stories and what basically happened over the three years. Well, it's because Z Sasuke and Zether both actually ended up getting permission from Tsunade to go away for as long as it takes for them to destroy Itachi of the Sharingan because... You know, they've been training for the past three years just for this moment. And 
So Nari can see that look in their eyes. They both want it bad. And Naruto at this moment is actually gone with Jiraiya for a mission that, you know, only requires the both of them. So while, you know, the team that Shikamaru's in and all that stuff, they actually ended up having Naruto and Jiraiya go with them after their sensei Asuma gets obliterated. So that means that Asuma sensei already got put on a t-shirt, meaning rest in peace. In case you guys get that reference, then you have to comment down who that's from. But anyways, with that being said, yeah, Asuma already got folded. Therefore, Naruto and Jiraiya decided to step in, right? Jiraiya, because he actually knew Asuma sensei quite well. So he was like, bro, not about to let my boy die in vain. So yeah, Naruto and Jiraiya win. And in case you guys are expecting for me to cover how this goes, it pretty much goes very, very similar to the version that we got in canon. See, Naruto obliterates Kakazu's all of his hearts using a Rasen Shuriken. And Jiraiya actually helps lead Hidan over to Shikamaru. So that gets handled. Kakashi doesn't even have to go with them. And Kakashi's actually on a little bit of a solo mission right as we speak so everybody's basically doing something different with each other right they're all doing their own little things so sasuke and zether finally finished packing up after just talking about how life has been for them and they're both now ready to go face the challenge that's been looming over their heads for the past 16 years well technically not 16 years but ever since the uchiha massacre happened yeah they've been wanting this so bad so, yeah, they definitely deserve it, like, very, very, very a lot. Why did I say very, very a lot? No, yeah, they deserve it, basically, bottom line, right? And so, they're both pretty much getting their stuff ready to finally be able to take down Itachi. But, Future Zether's gonna be taking care of that. Hope you enjoyed doing this fight, me. Oh, I'm gonna love doing this fight, me. <laughs> You guys are probably like, yo, Zether, uh, are you weird? And technically, I'm not talking to myself since past me and future me are talking to each other. You, you get what I'm putting down? So technically, it's not weird. So if you call me weird, you're weird, okay? Okay? All right, anyways, that being said, yeah, as previous me already basically established, Naruto would basically end up folding Kakazu. It'd be a pretty one-sided battle. And on Naruto's side of things, things would kind of be a little bit on the boring side. However, now, we will finally get into the battle between Zether and Sasuke. See, this is when Zether and Sasuke would basically proceed to finally take up on that message that Sasuke gets. You guys know how Sasuke ends up getting a message in canon basically telling him to meet Itachi at a certain location the uchiha compound hideout or something like that yeah they end up going there and uh it's uh it's gonna be pretty late to say the least right they would grab their stuff and they would proceed to basically walk over towards the uchiha hideout right immediately they would arrive to the outskirts of it as it's at this point that kisame would basically look at naruto or no not sorry not naruto but zether he would look at zether as it's at this point that he would be like, all right, Sasuke, you may go, but you, as he would aim his blade at Zether, he would then say, you stay and fight me. As it's at this point that Sasuke would basically walk over, walk past Kisame, but before he finishes walking past him, Sasuke would quite literally be like, nah, bro, I'm not gonna fight Itachi. We are. As Zether and What's it called? Sasuke would both blitz Kisame so fast that they would both decapitate him from each side. See, Sasuke would use his blade as he unsheaths it and slashes Kisame's head from behind. And Zether would slash it from the top. As his head, it falls clean off. And Kisame is both just... The man is on the ground, basically. They proceeded to obliterate the man with no Fs given. They have no chill. The hands are rated E for everybody. They're not playing any games. Now... It's at this point that they would basically proceed to continue walking inside. Sasuke would have a, no weird, no real expression on his face. He would just be sitting there contemplating what he's gonna say to him. As it's been so many years since he finally, since he saw Itachi, it's been three years since he last saw him, and now he finally feels like he's ready to take on Itachi. However, this is when they would finally arrive towards the place that Itachi's at. And this is when Itachi would basically start doing his uh, little genjutsu stuff. He would start doing that stuff. However, Zether and Sasuke would both dispel it. Like, nah, 
nah, don't play with us. We're not about to start none of this Genjutsu battle. We're throwing straight hands, bro. We're not here for Genjutsu. We're not here for none of this Kodoma Tsukami, Tsukiyomi. Nope, we're not here for none of that. Infinite Tsukiyomi, we're not here for none of that, bro. We're here to beat your ass. Zethir would basically say that as Itachi's like, huh. Looks like you've both matured quite a bit. This is when Sasuke is about to go up to Itachi, but this is when Zether would hold his hand out before him. As he would then say, Itachi, before we do this, I just have one question. Why? Why did you take out the Uchiha clan? As Itachi would smirk, he would then say, to test the abilities of my strength. He would make up a lie, obviously, and this is when Zether would immediately grit his teeth as he would say, I thought you'd say something like that. Immediately, he would look at Sasuke as Sasuke would look towards Zether's direction, and it's at this point that they would both play no games, no warm-ups, none of this stuff. Zether and Sasuke, it's on sight with them. Zether and Sasuke would both pretty much activate their dojutsus. Sasuke would turn on his Sharingan, and Zether would basically activate his Byakugan. Sasuke at this point would pretty much coat his sword and himself in lightning very very similar to the uh, to the third Raikage no the fourth Raikage sorry yeah the fourth and the man gets such speed because see as much as I did cover what Sasuke ended up learning during the time skip the main thing that Sasuke worked on was speed speed and striking like just completely so fast that people cannot react to him that's what Sasuke has going for him. He would have his Sharingan on, and not only that, he would even have Sage Mode activated. As he would blitz at Itachi at unfathomable speeds. He would hit him with the back of his sword to, to Itachi's gut as Itachi would be sent flying. And it's at this point that Itachi gets up and coughs out blood. As he realizes that Sasuke is not playing no games. Sasuke would stand right in front of him as he smirks and says... Who's the one that's on their knees now? As it's at this point that Zether would basically smirk as he was activate his one Byakugan and he would coat his sword in lightning as well. As it's at this point that Zether would be like, I right, say less. As he would blitz right by Itachi and it's at this point that he would hold his sword to his neck and say, any last words? Immediately Itachi would basically, um, what's it called? He would substitute Jutsu out of the way and this one he would be pretty far distance as Itachi would immediately realize he has no chance of playing any games against these two. See, if he messes around, they will kill him before so Itachi even gets a chance to talk to his brother. So Itachi Itachi would immediately step away from them and create a bunch of clones so that they could get distracted as Itachi would activate a Susano. It's at this point that a battle would ensue as Zether would pretty much proceed to blitz right at the Susano as he would do one of his hardest hitting strikes with the lightning blade he would cut as well Itachi would use the Yadamir and block the attack as it reflects the damage back onto Zether. Zether would get blown back straight into a wall as Zether would then crack his neck and his knuckles and be like alright as it's at this point that Sasuke would look at what just happened to Zether and say <laughs> child's play as he would blitz right by the shield and the sword would almost actually end up cutting into sasuke however him being fast enough he would dodge it and he would hit it with the blunt with the blunt part of his sword as he would smash half of the susano and itachi would then get flown back as itachi would then be forced to activate more of the susano and it's at this point that zether would then get up as he's like all right you ready as sasuke would say <laughs> course I am. It's at this point that Zether would say, alright, I'll rush at him, prepare the attack. Immediately, Zether would begin to pretty much start rushing at Itachi as he would quite literally, for a split second, activate Slug Sage Mode as he would pretty much hit the Susanoo with his blade so hard the entire Susanoo. He would, no, not the Susanoo, but he would hit the Yadamir so hard it would break, causing a loud sonic boom to go off as everybody just gets blown back and you just see Sasuke standing back as his shield is completely destroyed. Sasuke at this point would say, now brother, you will die with the thunderclap as he would bring his hand down and it's at this point that Itachi would be hit with the attack known as Kirin. And after that, we would hear, rest in peace, as Sasuke would pretty much fold Itachi. After that attack, 
Itachi's entire Susanoo would just completely get dispelled as Itachi is on the ground, like basically borderline dead. As it's at this point that Zether and Itachi, uh, no, not sorry, not Zether and Itachi, but Zether and Sasuke would basically walk over to Itachi. They would quite literally stand over his body as Sasuke would grab Itachi by the throat and pick him up and say, now why did you kill mom and dad? As tears would start rushing out of Sasuke's eyes, he would say, everything I did for him my entire life has been in order to kill you now why why in god's earth do i not feel any satisfaction he would punch the ground as zether would hold his, hold his hand on sasuke's shoulder and itachi would then lift his fingers as he would put, touch sasuke's forehead as he always does and he would then say i've always loved you sasuke and that would be his final words. This is when Sasuke's eyes would just widen as Itachi's body completely falls limp. And at this point, Zether would just be in complete awe. This is when Sasuke would just start crying and Zether would pretty much go over to Sasuke as he would basically sit down as it would then begin to rain. And Sasuke and Zether would just be sitting in the rain talking. Sasuke would then say, why did he do that at the end? Why were those his last words? Why? As Zether would look at Sasuke, he would say, I don't know. But one thing's for certain. We have to find out what really happened on that night. As Sasuke just waters up his eyes even more and says, Why could it not have done anything? Zether would look at Sasuke's direction as he would say, You know, there is one way we could possibly get some answers. As he would say, The third Hokage Hiruzen. We could ask him for the information. Sasuke would then say, you're right. As he would get up and just be at a loss for words. He doesn't know how to feel. He doesn't know whether to be angry or sad or what. He's just having so many mixed emotions, right? He just doesn't know what's going on, right? And it's at this point that, well, out of nowhere, a random weird or shape would come in out of nowhere into existence as Obito would pretty much teleport and come into view. Immediately after seeing this, Zether would notice this as he would blitz over to Obito and try to slash him using nothing but his normal strength. And Obito would pretty much phase through it as Sasuke's on the ground and he's still just thrown off his he's thrown off his game he would himself try to stab into obito however as he does that obito would use chains as he actually has a change in this version and he would wrap them around sasuke's necks as sasuke would get dragged on the ground and it's at this point that zeta would say no he would blitz towards obito's direction and punch him square in the face however obito would phase through and with one swift moment motion zether would turn around as he would stab part of his blade into obito and say never touch my brother obito would then proceed to basically smirk under his mask as he's like you might want to look at what you just did as zether would realize that he wasn't again jutsu he was completely off of his game and and by the time that zether is well right on time to realize what just happened obito would have his hand plunged straight into sasuke's left side of his chest his entire arm would have been intangible and then he made it tangible again inside of sasuke's body as sasuke would drop down to the ground blood would be pouring out of his mouth as zether seeing this would immediately be like just scream to the heavens as Zether would activate everything. He would hold nothing back. The Byaku Yasil, Sage Mode. He would immediately drop the sword as he would activate both of his of his uh, Lion Fist attacks. As he would blitz towards Obito so fast, so incredibly fast that Obito does not have a single millisecond to react. And Obito would pretty much get obliterated, atomized by the attack. Zether would have put every fiber of his being into that blast as obito's entire body would vanish and zether would then look at sasuke he's like sasuke but right as that happens obito would come back into the plane of existence as he would have actually ended up using what was that jutsu called that the that the sharingan has access to basically he would use the same thing that he did when he had to fight against conan and conan blew him up with a billion paper bombs and stuff like that that's essentially what he ends up doing and uh yeah, he basically comes back into, oh, it's Izanagi. He would use Izanagi as he would restore himself back to life. And from a distance, he would look at Zether as he would say, we will meet again. 
However, the next time, I promise you one thing, boy. In his moderate voice, he would say, I'll be ready, and the next time, it'll be a full-on war against your village. Nobody will be able to stop me, Madara Uchiha. As it's at this point that Zether would look at his direction, but he either has to choose whether he has to kill Obito or save Sasuke, and you all know what Zether's gonna choose. He would quite literally stay on the ground as he would use his medical ninjutsu to heal up Sasuke's wound. This is when Sasuke, after about 30 minutes of getting healed by Zether, and also keep in mind, Zether is two times better than Tsunade is at medical ninjutsu, so he definitely was able to heal Sasuke up, and Sasuke would wake up a couple of, a couple of uh, minutes later, as it's at this point that Sasuke Sasuke would go over to Itachi's body. No, Sasuke would basically ask Zether what happened, as Zether would explain to him that a man in an orange mask claiming to be Madara Uchiha came in and stabbed him through the chest, as Sasuke would just be shocked, and it's at this point that Sasuke would say, well, I guess I'm going to be needing all the power, right? As at this point, Sasuke's eyes would be revealed, and blood would be gushing out of them, as he would have the Mangekyo Sharingan activated, and it's at this point that he would grab Itachi's eyes for safekeeping. As this version of Sasuke definitely knows about the downsides of the Sharingan, seeing as he's been training with uh, Kakashi for three years, so those downsides finally started catching up to uh, Kakashi. However, the man is still decent. He still has another two years left in him, right? Because it's not like he just spams um, the Mangekyo power that he has, right? And Obito does that as well, but nothing happens to him. So it's like, probably doesn't do that much damage to him. So yeah with that being said though guys zether would basically proceed to tell sasuke why he did that as sasuke would explain about the eternal mangekyo sharingan and zether would just be like yo kind of broken kind of broken as they would both not even be in the joking mood they would both rush straight at the leaf village as they're both just having one thing on their mind an all-out war is coming and it's at this point that they would return to the village to immediately inform Tsunade about the news. And right as they enter the room that Tsunade's in, Zether would immediately see Naruto and Jiraiya standing in their victorious after their win over Hidan and Kakazu. Two Akatsuki members, which will be two less problems that they'll have to worry about. It's at this point that Sasuke would blurt out that a war is coming, as Zether and Naruto would both kind of just be quiet. Naruto would be shocked, and Jiraiya would just be like, what? As it's at this point that Sasuke would explain that a man named Madaru Chiha is waging war, and Tsunade would immediately just be like, alright, as she would start to get all of the ninjas ready for a full out attack, and so for the next couple of days, they would basically begin to pretty much prepare for the attack of the Akatsuki because they know that that attack is definitely coming their way very, very soon. That being said, after these news, Zether and Sasuke would basically start walking away as Naruto would ask for more details and this is when Zether would say that he's kind of hungry as he needs to take his mind off of everything. Sasuke would say he does as well as they would basically go over to the barbecue so uh, shop that Choji likes to go to a lot and this is when they would basically essentially proceed to tell Naruto everything that happened with the battle against Itachi Uchiha. Naruto would just be shocked as he's like, really? All that ensued? Those were his last words? They would just continue talking about this topic as they're all just like in in we you know a moment. Like they're all just like, what do, what do we do now? Like where do we go from here? And it's at this point that they would essentially continue gathering up troops as Naruto gets filled in on the situation and Naruto would say that he's definitely going to be there to back them up during this war as Zether and Sasuke would smile thinking that you always have been Naruto ever since we ever since we were put in team 7 they would all pretty much fist bump and this is when they would go over to Sasuke's house as they would begin to plan what the strategy is going to be they would start to basically dig up information about the Akatsuki members and while this is all happening as all of this is going on Sasuke alone would end up visiting the third Hokage's house as yeah third Hokage he's alive so when Sasuke ends up going to his office or no, his house, after, you know, everything, Hiruzen would say, been expecting you. As Sasuke would say, you got some questions to answer for me, old man. As he would immediately slam his hands down and say, what do you know about Itachi? This is when Zether would body flicker in the room and say, definitely needed to be here to witness this. As 
Itachi, no, 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 Sasuke would then basically say, tell me now, Hiruzen would then sigh, he would hit his, he, he would hit his little joint or whatever, as he would then say, I guess I can't hide it any longer, he would then proceed to spill the beans on what happened all those years ago, and after hearing all of this, Sasuke would just clench his fist so tightly, as he just says, for the good of the village, for the good of the village, he had to kill every single Uchiha member. Hiruzen would then begin to explain that Danzo was the one who put him up to the task, but Hiruzen was at a loss for words and he didn't know what to do. It was his fault. Itachi was not allowed to blame for the death of the Uchiha massacre. And this is when Sasuke would get enraged, as Sasuke would pretty much proceed to create a Chidori as he would stab straight through the third Hokage's chest. And it's at this point that Sasuke and Zether would just stand there. Zether would stay in complete silence as he would say, Honestly, I won't judge you. I would have done the same thing if I was in your shoes. As Sasuke would say, I'm gonna kill Donzo. As he would pretty much blitz over there, even faster than Zether can react. As Donzo would just be like, huh? And it's at this point that Sasuke would kill him over and over and over in the most painful ways until Donzo's life force fades and Donzo has zero more Izanagi's left. Sasuke would still trick him into thinking he has more and Donzo would get effed straight in the booty. Like the man is GG, right? The man is done for, right? And this would basically lead to the day where the Ikatsuki finally decide to show up now it would basically consist of all the remaining members itachi kisame kakazu and hidan have all been gg'd but datara and uh Sasori are still alive so many of the other akatsuki members are still alive meaning that you know you can probably bet who's going to be end up fighting who now as soon as the akatsuki would arrive Pain would actually do it in the dark darkness of night as Pain would use Shinra Tensei as he would blow a giant portion of the village. However, Sasuke's newly acquired Susano would be able to block a certain portion of the village from getting destroyed, meaning that the village was a lot better off than they were in canon. And since Pain wasn't fully, you know, just um fully undisclosed and like people actually knew he was coming they were able to better prepare so no normal people ended up getting hurt the village was destroyed yes but people were all safe they were all evacuated to the little hideouts that the that the village has right and it's at this point that i'm pretty sure you can all guess who's gonna be fighting pain my boy naruto's gonna fold pain like a like an omelet this man is going to get effed right this man is going to get folded launch hit he's going to get omeletted he's going to be put on a t-shirt naruto would still of course have his fight against pain zether would actually end up fighting against sasori as he would obliterate each and every single one of his puppets that poison stuff that ain't gonna fly the hundred puppet jutsu that ain't gonna fly zether murders the man and as for datara come on now you guys knew who was gonna slap datara around it's gonna be my boy my boy my our, our best boy in the entire naruto series kiba come on now we all knew this was coming kiba is the true warrior of naruto kiba's the real main character that's the reason we watched naruto not jokes jokes but seriously uh what's it called sasuke would take out kiba and as for obito and the rest of the members sasuke and uh zether and naruto would basically end off the rest of their battles as Many of the shinobi that you guys can basically expect to be doing the battling and all that stuff will basically be in an all-out gigantic. And when I say gigantic, I mean a, a incredibly vast. It is not a game. They are way too many people there, right? To put it bluntly, there's way too many people there, right? And they are just throwing hands, bro. They actually ended up um, not even having any reanimation. So it would just be a bunch of Akatsuki members. And seeing as they have the entire village to lay back on, the Akatsuki pretty much gets folded like an omelet. See, Obito pretty much died to a full-powered Zether. Now imagine a full-powered Sasuke that now not only has the three Tomoe, but got an internal Mangekyo amp because Tsunade, she definitely did that. She was a little triggered at the fact that they ended up killing um, Donzo and Hiruzen, but uh, when she found out what they did, she was like, yeah, bro, uh, I mean, it's a pain we lost Hiruzen, but it's like, you know, what are you gonna do, right? 
The man messed up. He made some mistakes in his life. He is and probably didn't deserve the faith that he got in this what if. However, it's the faith that he's gonna get. That being said, Sasuke's way stronger. And at this point, Naruto has a full control over KCM1. Naruto already had his little encounters with the Ninetales. And it's not even because the Ninetales and him were friendly. It's just that Naruto got so incredibly powerful that Naruto now has KCM1, right? He, he was able to tame his tailed beast and defeat him. He had his interaction with Minato, Kushina, all that stuff basically ends up happening. And yeah, our boy Naruto, you know, he's doing good things for himself. Way more OP than he can and flying rising and all. So Pain, yeah, he gets folded. And as for Obito, it's, um, I mean, I guess I could get into the battle. But before I do, there's something else that's happening at a distance. About two weeks ago, the four Kage actually decided to have a little bit of a summit together. And the thing that they are going to be discussing is the power of the Hidden Leaf Village. As of lately, the Leaf Village has been growing so, so far. Like, the village hidden in the clouds and the village hidden in the stone, the, ra the rain, and the, um, I don't know, dude, honestly. The, the four villages, right? The four other villages all met up. And uh, they are all basically trying to pretty much do a war against the Leaf Village. Because if they are allowed to continue to get more powerful, that could potentially pose a threat to the other great nations. So while this battle with the Akatsuki is going down, other ninjas that have spies in the Leaf Village would basically get report on this. And the other villages would be ready to strike. So after the Leaf Village is finally finished dealing with the Akatsuki, they they now have to fight against the rest of the four great shinobi alliance not the five but the four nation shinobi alliance that being said and this is when i will now be covering the fight against obito so the fight would start with obito wearing his white mask he would have his chains and he would immediately teleport as he would go right in front of naruto as he would use his chains and he would try to wrap naruto within them but naruto would throw kunais in every direction as he would teleport to each one of them grabbing the kunais and he would basically basically grab Zether by his back as it's at this point that he would pretty much teleport over to Zether's direction I mean Obito's direction as he just became intangible tangible again I mean and Zether would slice at his neck as Sasuke would pretty much proceed to hit him with the Chidori but they would both miss and this is when all of them are actually going full power but Obito is making sure he's not lacking he's pretty much fully intangible everywhere but his foot like his little Achilles Achilles feet yeah that's pretty much the only place that he's not intangible at now this one they would continue to fight and obito would continue dodging up attacks upon attacks upon attacks however this is when sasuke would devise a pretty dope strategy see sasuke was basically going to press obito and while he was doing that naruto was basically going to be tasked to create a gigantic rasengan and while naruto was going to use the gigantic rasengan that was actually going to be a diversion as zether is actually going to be the one to finish everything off naruto would come in as obito was caught off guard and obito would barely be able to dodge the gigantic rasengan by barely dodging out of the way however right as he does he was completely off balance and not expecting this and similar to what happened in canon naruto would teleport over to zether as he would teleport him right behind obito and we would get a scene where zether pretty much uses a lion's fist and stabs it and no 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 not a lion's fist but his sword sorry his grab his sword as he plunges it square into obito's heart and just drops to the ground obito's body is plunged into the floor and obito is a complete dead man the man is limp the man's gg he was he's done actually nah obito proceeded to get back up after this as he would rip the sword out of his back and say that if he thinks that's all it's gonna take then he better be prepared to atomize him as it's at this point that zether naruto and sasuke would all just be completely at awe as they're like how are you still alive i literally plunged the sword into your chest bro you're cracked this is when Obito would get up weekly as he would then hold up a hand sign as a box would appear and inside of it would be the body of Madara Uchiha. As now, we will have Obito and Madara against Zether, Sasuke, and Naruto. 
but it's at this point that they would all stop playing see at this point naruto was using case am but after seeing madara the qb decided he was gonna give him that crispy case am too they had a little fist bump moment and naruto just like that is way more op sasuke the man is already broken as it is come on now the man is op and he's even faster than kcm2 naruto it's insane and as for um what's it called zether he activates his hundred healing slug sage mode and it's wrapped boys as soon as they all get just completely ready zether would actually be the one who takes charge against obito as he would atomize the man by pretty much hitting him with the lion's fist that is has so much chakra into it that it would destroy obito's entire body leaving no traces left and madara well to put it lightly madara gets dusted on by zether no no no, not sorry not zether but by sasuke and naruto it's at this point that well zether would pretty much proceed to stand alongside his fellow buddies this being you know our boy sasuke our boy naruto uzumaki and they would all pretty much look at each other as they smile they would fist bump as Kakashi would be standing far away looking at his team as he pretty much body flickers over there and tells them that he's so proud of them. However, right as this happens, a, a gigantic, like someone would speed blitz into, into Kakashi and this would actually be the fourth Raikage as he has the lightweight boulder jutsu placed on him by the Mizukage as it's at this point that they would realize that the other villages are here to attack and this is when an all-out brawl between the leaf village and the rest of the other villages would ensue Konkuro gets folded I'm sorry boys if Madara could fold the five Kage at full power then uh, the guys the three guys by themselves could pretty much obliterate the entire four nations because i mean let's be honest boys even if it was naruto versus the all five of the nations excluding sasuke naruto with a bunch of clones could definitely do that naruto would end up creating a thousand notes three ten thousand clones because i know because i know b because no wait not because i know b because naruto ain't no b word right and they would obliterate the fodder shinobi completely making them all just return now zether would make sure he takes out the raikage because you know he almost took out kakashi if it wasn't for the fact that zether can heal the man barely the man probably would have died and it's at this point that the entire rest of the nations would just get obliterated bro I i'm sorry but that is all there is to it the other nations would get gg there is not a thing they can do about it they would get completely manhandled there's not a thing that any of the other villages any of the other ninjas could do about it none of them had strong shinobis anywhere near the level of zether sasuke and naruto and after defeating the Raikage and all of the rest of the forces retreat, this is when Zether would start walking towards Sasuke's direction. As Sasuke would have a big bright smile on his face, Zether would have one. Everybody that's pretty much part of the Leaf Village would have had like what, like four casualties, which were fodder shinobi that honestly deserved it. You know, like if you're going to lose your life to like some other weaker shinobis, then come on, bro. Like you, you, you're not about to be this weak. And yeah, they basically had a couple casualties. The village was destroyed, but everybody was safe. All of the villagers would run out as they would begin to thank the heroes of the village, Team 7. As Kakashi would get a brief flashback of when Team 7 were just kids. When Zether was arrogant. When Sasuke was like just kind of lacking behind zether and naruto was a complete goofball who's now respected by the village this is when zether would proceed to basically walk over to sasuke as he would say so what's next however right as he looked he starts walking over there zether would have a bright light beam on his face as it's at this point that zether would basically hear noises in the background and it's at this point that zether would pretty much proceed to open his eyes as he would hear alex alex wake up time to school oh, oh no